a team like South Sudan, who Mark told us earlier, yeah, they don't have one indoor gymnasium in the entire yeah. country. If they were if playing a team anybody like else. That, if a team like that managed to beat Team USA, that would be objectively this massive sports story. But I'm over here like, put your boot on their fucking throat. Yeah. Beat them by 50 points. Don't, Show don't who give the them fuck we are. Yeah, send yeah. them back to the goddamn gymless country with nothing. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, here we are, everybody. We're here in the uh, virtual Airstream studios back in my usual climbs here in uh, Burbank, California, roasting in the heat. I mean, I got my little window unit going, but it's been hotter than the devil's ding dong, Joe. You been well, too hot there? As we always say, at least y'all ain't got this humidity. Yeah, it's a dry heat. Have out you been, there. You been uh, flooded out? The Did, good Lord been washing down on y'all with his uh, wrathful fury? Because in my home state of Tennessee, a lot of my buddies back home have been sending me pictures of Pretty wild flood shit. My buddy Chris Key went to Dollywood with his family, and it was just like like two feet of flood water everywhere they went. Didn't hit. So this is the first time I'm saying this actually publicly. I posted about it on my Hero Hero just because I was in the middle of doing a video, and I was going to finish the second part of the video when I got back home, and this thing happened to me, and I had to address it. Um, so... We had just got through with Well Red, I guess, I think. That was what it was. And I was like, finally, I can go to the park and walk. This is going to be great. At my house, it looked fine. I get out to the park, and it looks a little dark. And I'm like, okay, it's probably going to start sprinkling on me. But, like, I can handle a little sprinkle. If it starts raining too bad, I'll come home. I get about – I park in this gravel parking lot that, that there's an entrance to a trail that goes into the woods' woods, like where you're just surrounded in woods. I want to say I got – 250 300 meter listen at me using olympic talk yeah. meters uh about you done got franced up baby I they're, know. they're getting to you god damn it uh so like about how many yards is that i mean i think meters and yards are like kind of close but again yeah. i ain't french so what the hell do i know why yeah. would you why would you ever default to meters i think like, it's because the olympics I, yeah, but I really, I really but, but in your head, you're American. We're all, we're both red blooded American men. Yeah. When you think of a distance in your head, I think of yards. Right, exactly. Football fields. You know. Yeah. Right. I don't know why I just did it's, that. It's very weird that you defaulted to meters this one time. See, that's the danger of yep. this commie propaganda coming out of Europe right now in the form of the uh, Olympic Games. That's why we ought not let them have nothing. We should just I, have every Olympics ever since we'd have best at it anyway. That's just my opinion. Anyway, 300 meters away, some shit was going down. What happened? It's close to that, right? And as soon as that happens, I just, the wind really, and I'm on my phone with my mom this whole time, so she heard every bit of this, what you're about to realize is like sheer panic and holy fuck, kind of. Um, about that time, I see a tree, literally, like out of a Disney cartoon, just go, whoo, whoo, like, Fucking metronome, right? Mm -hmm, like the uh, whomping willow. Like the whomping willow, yeah. yes. Um, I saw a thing, by the way, today that this girl wrote an article for the New York Times just shitting all over millennials, and she gave these key points about... Is she older or younger? Is younger, she a Zoomer younger. or a Boomer? Okay. She's a Zoomer, and she all was... Right. Yeah, and she was talking about... Uh, one of her key points was like, their insanely weird obsession with Harry Potter. It's like, let it the fuck go. And you just mentioned the Whomping Willow. But I, what else did they say that you can see our ankles because of our socks? Yes, and, yes, that yeah. was fucking in it. All the shit that me uh -huh. and you do, bro. Yeah, All right. the shit that well, me yeah. and you do. Well, we millennials. I know we're getting um, old, but let me. Okay, let me ask. You said this was a, like an op-ed in the New York Times. I think so. Was she it was like one of them? Was she hitting? Like, was it funny? Like, was no. it playful jabbing? No. Or she no. was just saying, these are all the ways in she which was millennials being don't hit. Well, that's, yeah. that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. She oh, was talking. I mean, hell, we're supposed to be the ones bitching about the kids today, and I feel like we don't even do all that much of it. I feel like most millennials are like, I hope the Zoomers hit, man, because we're tired of everybody else not hitting. Do you know right. what I mean? Like, I agree. Like, I love, I've always said they're the most emotionally mature gr generation we've ever had, and they're going to fucking right. save us. And this how they do us? I know what I'm saying. They're fucking stabbing us in the back like this. They're going to come yeah. for us for no goddamn reason. I mean, hell, if they want that smoke, that's all right. But Yeah. Yeah, because we actually used to smoke. Uh -huh. Them fuckers right. didn't. Anyways, so I see Womp and Willow, right? And it's almost like time slowed down. It was like that dolly shot from fucking Jaws. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Whoa. Uh -huh. And I was like, I said to my mom, because she sent it back to me, I said, Tor tornado. Oh, shit. And I just, I like, it was, then it turned into that scene from Jurassic Park where Sam Neill turns around and goes, run, you know? Uh -huh. 
And I just turned around and started fucking running. About that time, I heard that tree snap in half, right? I didn't look back, but I know. Holy shit. But I know I'm from here, Tornado Alley down here. I know what a tree snapping in half and falling sounds like. So I'm hauling ass, and the wind picks up even further. And again, this trail is surrounded by trees, and I'm in my peripheral. I can see the trees coming in and out <laughs> yeah, of my fucking like, peripheral yeah. like this. Like you're in like the mall of some yes. eldritch beast. It's yes, like exactly. closing in. You're trying to escape yes. its throat as it's like it's going to consume you whole. Yes. Yeah. And I'm and like, that's I an don't, old, ter- that's that like deep ancestral terror. Right yes, there. bro. <laughs> and I don't remember that I'm on the phone with my mom, but I am the whole time just going, fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah. And I'm in your head behind you. Every tree is snapping as you pass by it. They're falling over. Fucking there's explosions happening. Yes, bro. Rambo shit. Christopher Nolan, like Hans Zimmer uh, score playing as you're out running these breaking trees. Well, yes, bro. And then in front of me, I do. I see a tree snap and fall. Luckily not in the, like at Mm -hmm. me or in the path. It was the other way, but it was in front of me. And I'm like, that's going to happen again. And I'm, it was at that point where I'm not a religious man, but I wasn't running no more. God was, you understand? Mm-hmm. Like God was running. There was one set of motherfucking pr- footprints in that yep. goddamn woods. And I was just like, I consciously, I stopped being scared and was literally going, this is the fucking fastest anyone has ever ran <laughs> in right. their fucking life. And so I'm coming out. I'm coming out of the fucking holler, right? There's this. Are open- you saying you said you stopped being scared and thought that? Are you saying like you started like hitting for yourself? Yeah, like, yeah, goddamn, yeah, I'm yeah, flying yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah fucking dude. still got yeah. it. Jesus I was like, Christ. I wish there yeah. was a laser at the end of this right. shit. Well, I, there's nobody. Why is there nobody here to see this? Yeah, fucking if a, but, yeah, my, if a 40 year old adrenaline- smokes it in the woods and nobody's around to see it, did yeah. it even really hit? You know? Yeah, because yeah. I think it. <laughs> I think there's like peaks of adrenaline or whatever, and that's when mine like finally peaked, and I stopped like. Maybe I forgot why I was running. I was just like, I knew I had to get the fuck out. So anyways, at the very end of this trail that leads back into the park, the gravel parking lot or whatever, I'm still coming. And I'm not, I'm like, I can't just stop running once I'm here because trees are this big. So one could still fall over and fuck. So I'm fucking gunning it. And I notice there's this group of fucking, and when I say teenagers, I mean 15 and 16 boys with like their real fucking hot my age mom okay uh, all right okay. yeah glad that was the mom i didn't know these teenage boys hanging out with their smoking hot and i was like whoa yeah, bro yeah, yeah. what yeah, the yeah. fuck okay. they're moms they're, yeah they're that mom. hits anyways yeah. i'm fucking coming through and they and i look up and these fucking kids are like going yeah boy they're like fucking mm-hmm. cheering me on and shit because like they kind of get what's happening you know yeah. uh, they're like god damn Boy, you was booking it, cuz you was booking it, cuz. Yeah. And they were like, "Did you see that tree fail?" And I was like, "Why the fuck do you think I was running, motherfucker?" You right. know. And uh, any, oh, I forgot to tell you, as I'm coming out, a limb snapped and brushed my thigh. Like it didn't yeah. hit my thigh, but it brushed it. So like that's how. Cl- and luckily on the pants, like the shorts part, so I didn't get a cut or nothing. But like, dude, once I got, out, I had to sit in my car for like ten minutes. Not, and it was like out of breath, but it was more like just processing it. And after I got done processing, I was like, I'm pretty sure that's the most fucking terrified I have ever been in my goddamn life. I remember one time it was during one of them huge ice storms that hit the South in the nineties. So I was probably like eight or nine, 93. Younger, younger than my, I, I know the big one was 93. Right. And in my head, I was like, that would have made me seven, which does kind of match up with like, I know my like my my mama was in her first apartment, right? Which means it was real soon after the divorce because within four years she'd been through eighteen, been evicted <laughs> from every trailer park in the fucking county, or whatever. But like, I ain't got a pay so, stub, but I got cash. I'll give you two months. So, I, I guess that's right. The ice storm in ninety three, which was a yeah. big bad one. And I was seven years old, and like that's how we I, tell time in the I, south is by tragic events, right? And I know that. As an adult, thinking back on it, like, and I have a whole bit about this, about how, like, our parents, in retrospect, like, our parents clearly did not give a fuck about, and I, like, with my mama, it's like headline no news, shit. obviously, yeah. yeah, but, but I just mean in general. My parents were great, and they didn't because, give a fuck. Because I was a, no, but no rural, all I could speak for is rural parents, yeah. but rural parents in the 90s, none of them gave a fuck. Like, no. we were, they, we just did what the fuck ever all the time, uh, but anyway, but I was only seven and I was like, I'm she had they had to be aware that the news and the weather was like, hey, it's about to not hit tonight, right? <laughs> They'd have to. 
But I was at my buddy Tony's apartment. Because they will is, interrupt Skinner for shit like that. Right, which is on the other side of the apartment complex. And that, nobody, now of course, of course, I didn't have a cell phone or anything like that. I don't know. All I'm saying is, even though this was happening, I was just at my buddy's house playing or buddy's yeah, apartment. Yeah. It gets real bad. And I, it, I think his mama was like, you probably should get home because it's going to turn probably bad. You need to go so outside and That walk. is funny. That's also funny in retrospect that she was like, hey, you need to get the fuck out of here. Uh, <laughs> Because otherwise, your little fat ass is going to be stuck here all night, and that we ain't, ain't got it. enough slim jams no. for all of us. No, no, MacGyver's coming on later. You ain't going to fuck that up. But anyway, <laughs> but whatever. What I left to go home, but it was it had already kicked off. Like shit was going down. I'm seven years old, alone, and I've just got to go to the other end of this apartment complex. But you said something that made me think of this. Like halfway there, while you know. Hustling a little bit. I was a seven year old fat kid. I wasn't. Right. I wasn't mo docking like you were. But while hustling right. to the best of my ability, like like the this, ice, the, like the ice cream van is just a little yeah, bit of ways. This uh, big ass tree limb, big, huge to a seven year old yeah. as an adult. But like to a seven year old, it was massive. Tree limb, like iced over, snapped off, and plummeted to the ground, like literally right in front of me. Like it, like like it, you know it like came down like this and i like wow. stopped and almost fell back and i made it home and i'm saying like that probably would have either killed me or really fucked my brain up i'm pretty sure at seven <laughs> yeah. years old if that would have so yeah tree limbs they don't hit you know it would or, only or knock you back be. one grade though probably right. <laughs> you know but uh i want so we're talking about it flooding there and stuff I, I don't know if i've ever asked you about like uh how you feel about the Lord killing everybody with water at that time. And like, I and then him saying that rainbows rainbows is, is his uh, promise to us that he'll never do that. At least he used to be until the guys made it all gay and stuff. And they yeah. took it, they yeah. took it from the Lord, but ain't that the deal? He was like, he killed everybody with water. Everybody knows I'm Bible dumb, but I, even yeah. I know some of this, he killed everybody with water except for Noah and his, and his, his family animals and, the animals. and his family. Yeah. And then after that was over, he was like, that might, I mean, that was pretty harsh. Uh, I ain't saying I won't ever kill all y'all again. I might, but, but I will tell you this. I won't do it with water. I want water. And it's funny. It's like, you feel like Noah's sitting there like, so like it could be fire (laughs) or lightning. I'm going to stay on the boat. Yeah. Or swallowed by the earth. It's like, cause those would probably be even worse. And he's just yeah. like, I ah, don't worry about that. But anyway, he's just we, going we, back and talking to his wife. Like, okay, he already did the locust thing. So we know it's not right. that. Okay. Um, river of blood. I don't know, but surely but, uh, we're good. Right. Yeah. So he basically, what happened was, um, if I can remember correctly, he, so it wasn't like he just said, Noah, you and your family are the only ones who are good. Go get the animals. I'm pretty sure what happened was, he told, like, he was attempting to use Noah as his vessel to warn everybody, like, hey, y'all ain't been hitting for me, uh, but I'm going to give you one last chance. Like, I'm going to flood the earth, but if you will fucking pledge your allegiance to me, fucking fascist shit, mm-hmm. uh, then you'll be good. And Noah, I mean, think about this. You're just fucking, like, if if hypothetically this really happened, you're fucking just chilling out in the fucking whatever desert, you know, or wherever the fuck... And some old motherfuckers like, hey, so Lord told me, <laughs> first off, I'm building a boat mm-hmm. big enough, not only to fit all y'all if you want to come, right? but two, not one, but two of every goddamn animal on fucking planet Earth. God told me to do this because he's going to fucking flood this place. You're going, hey, uh, hey, kids, go inside right. real quick while I have I'll, a talk dude, I with feel Uncle like Noah. Back then- each individual person was aware of like maybe eight animals. Do you yeah, know right, what I mean? right, right. <laughs> You're like, oh, well, that's you don't need that big of a boat then. All you need, we're in the desert. You get the the two different snakes we have and a camel. What right. even else is there? There's I mean, dogs, that's kind that's of it, like you know. That's kind of like I, I've always taken that that I got older is like that's so the story of Noah and the Ark is proof of one of two things. Either you have to admit that it's bullshit. Because there's no goddamn way that millions upon millions of subspecies could fit on that one boat. Or you have to admit that evolution is real because where did new species come from then? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you literally have to pick one, but they're like, no, you don't because, uh, the, uh, the, the arc was like the crate in uh, dark matter. 
it just went on forever. <laughs> it just right. went on. I guess if you believe in an I mean, actual God, that could yeah, be, you know what I mean? That's not like, really that much more of a leap right. from the. But then why the does Jonah part? have to build the fucking boat? Why? Jonah? Just. Noah? Or Noah. Noah. Okay. Yeah. Why does oh, okay. Noah have to right. build the fucking boat? Like, I thought we can, had a crossover if event can, going for a minute no, there. Because no, 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 Jonah, no. I know he was the whale failure. Was and I was like, dude, was Jonah on the boat and then no. got hit by a whale? No, that, that'd be okay. too much. All right. Okay. You can't. That's like last season of Lost shit. God wasn't that yeah. bad. You know what I mean? Anywho. So, uh, all right. So, but you it's funny to think that that's that's pre-jesus lord right that's beef that's yeah. a, a huge cunt that guy bc which that's what it's funny to think about him being like like that was almost like a rock bottom thing for him or something you <laughs> know like, 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 he woke up he day, like jesus christ did i drown the whole world last night and then he's like probably and then yes he's like i gotta get my shit together dude i'm not like, and then he and then he yeah settled down had the kid and then he smoothed out after that he like grew up which i've heard other people point out that he chilled out out out, out, out after he had the kid but it is funny to think but, about it that way but but also trey jesus is him i never got that well actually you know what other people pointed this out too but like Fucking Bill Maher had that documentary Religious that came out when I was like a 20 year old Lord hater. And yeah. so I was like, this is my shit. And he talks to this G Jesus impersonator at a like a, uh, like a, like a Bible, like Bible land, yeah. like a, like a theme park, but for the Lord, you know, yeah. they'd be having those. And so they got a guy that plays Jesus and he looks all Jesus-y, but he's real, real Christian and stuff. And I remember Bill Maher went into this, went into all that with him. She's like, okay, but he, so, explain this to me like he is god but he's also the son of god at the same time but he's the holy ghost too he is all these things but he's not and all that like i mean how does that make any sense and this dude goes it's one of the only times that this ever happened with me for, for me personally with christianity this guy goes who's like okay you know what it's like here's what it's like he's like you know like the water cycle like there's water and it's mm -hmm. liquid water he's like if you freeze it it's still the same thing, but it that's ice now. Mm -hmm. And if you heat it up, it's still the same thing, but that's water vapor. But it, it right. is all water, but it right. is also all these other things, too. He was like, that's how the Lord be. And I was like, right. I still don't believe this shit, but that is well, a pretty quality analogy, in my I opinion. Couldn't like, agree more. And also, yeah. again, like, if you're buying that God can do anything, then it's just, you just get to hand wave it. Like, you're like, right. what, do you, what do you mean? Like, that just is what it is. Like, yeah. fucking, I am what I am, you know? Um all right. Well, let's. You've got an idea for a thing you want to start doing, which hits for me. We're I covering do. this week in fancy, right? Fancy, that is correct, Trey. Fancy news items every week. I love love it. It's a great idea. That is correct, Trey. And I would first. I mean, I hate to start off on a sour note. I really do because this sucks. Um, I mean, we've already started off and it's been hitting. So this ain't yeah. even. Well, that's starting true. on a sour note. This I mean, is, starting this segment. This is hitting a sour note, and yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Um, Trey, unfortunately, this week, Robert Lolly. Linguanato. Linguanato. Lolly Linguanato. Hold on, let me spell it for you and you say it. L I N G U A N N O T T O. N O. Linguanato? Linguanato. There you go. Is that one like one noodle? He's one Robbie One oh, Robbie One Robbie Noodle. One noodle. <laughs> Robbie One Noodle. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Robbie One Noodle, the inventor of the tiramisu, uh, died. He died. Bro, uh, I didn't know the inventor of the tiramisu was still kicking. It, it blew me it blew me away because I thought surely that's an old Parisian dessert or you know, Italian, what not Parisian, right. but like an old school. But no, he was 81 years old. And so here's the legend. Um mm -hmm. it was at uh it, it was in Treviso, Italy when it said that he invented it. And there are a couple a couple you know theories as to how it came about, but the main one is basically that. He accidentally dropped mascarpone in a bowl of sugar and eggs and was like, Mamma mia! You mm -hmm. know, and then was like, and he just made a hit. Uh, right. And then later, so there's a co inventor, Alba Di Pio Campiola, uh, wife of La Becheria owner Ado Campiola, uh, uh -huh. added ladyfingers soaked in espresso. So she was like, I can make this hit harder. And so the yeah. Tierra Masu was born. And, um, he is no longer with us. And again, dude, if you'd put a gun to my head and said, is the dude who invented the Karasu still alive? I'd have been it, like, get the fuck out of here. I would have said the exact same thing. But dude, a whole lot of like iconic dishes that we have are not as old as we all yeah. think that they are. Because Biden's, a lot of uh, like, Nancy Pelosi's older than the Cobb salad. Right. I totally buy that. I mean, she old as fuck. But I mean, but still, yeah, like yeah. a lot because a lot of these things are like especially American ones. products of techniques and equipment and just whatever shit like that that you know 
like we only really became remotely modern human beings in what, like the last 200 years or something? I mean, the Industrial Revolution. And you was, could argue we never did, but. Uh, right. Yeah. But I'm saying the Industrial Revolution was like yeah. in the 1800s or whatever. It wasn't that long ago. And it's Hold like, uh, they, some, obviously, there's some recipes that are old as fuck. Uh, but like a lot of a lot of these iconic ones are not as old as you think they are, and um, like dude, and, and it, what's wild also to think about is like that still be happening. Like yeah. you think about like oh they've done all the food, but like they ain't done all the food. Like people still like I know this has been years ago now, but like dude, the the guy and I I don't remember his name, but we could look him up and find out. The guy who invented the crow nut, yeah, is like a mega star chef now. Like no, I his know. his like. His claim to fame, the thing that broke him, was yeah. he invented the cronut. Yeah. And now he's a superstar food feller. And you know, I mean, that's happened in the past ten years or whatever. For sure. When do like you that. think when do you think chicken cordon bleu came out? Because that's, you know. Go either way. Nineteen thirty two. Early forties. So okay. yeah. Why, so th they invented that while the Nazis was fucking their shit up? Because uh, yeah. sincerely, part of my rationale was like Renaissance. Part of my rationale was like that that chicken cordon bleu really hits. It had to be a hitting time, not a Nazi time. That's what I thought. But apparently they made no, it during Nazi times because they I had to go, had to find something that hits that's in, the, in a go. world of not hitting. I could yeah, go right. either way because like, you know, yes. art the best art often right. comes from times of horribleness. Yes. And and dude, and being a art. chef is an art. Fuck Absolutely. yeah, it is. Yes. Absolutely. Like it's never mentioned, like when you think of artists. So, I mean, you know, comedians are we're never comedians and chefs are exactly the same. And that when someone says artist, no one thinks of us. But and I mean, with us, you shouldn't. Uh, but anyway, no, yeah, you should. Uh, yeah, chefs are absolutely artists, especially what some of these motherfuckers be doing. And just like art, it's obviously all subjective because some of it, I'm like, fuck yes. you, get the I, fuck yeah, out of here. I'll take that analogy even further in just a second. But I googled it. The guy's name is Dominique Ansel or Ansel, and he invented the cronut in. 2013 so yeah i know, knew that was 11, new. 11 years ago i mean i knew it was new too but i'm saying that's like brand. so i'm saying people still be they'd be innovating out here and on that note i've i'm very as someone who loves to cook and to bake and is real big into the shit i know it's an art form and part of the way i know it is is because i feel like every single art form that exists kind of sort of works the same way in at least one facet which is my philosophy on it is i believe that you have to be born with it. With like something. Pe yeah. People are either born with it or they're yeah. not. And if you're not born with it, that ain't never nothing you it. can ever do. No. And that, that don't hit, but that's just why, like, when it comes to painting, art, that stuff, that yeah. I, I was not born with it. Comedy's and I'll never the same way. Comedy is exact. I, I, any art any, form there is, yeah, is the same way. And, like, you don't have to be born then, amazing. You just have born, to be born with a spark. You got to be born with it. There, there's a thing that's it in any art form, and you either got it or you don't, and you have no control over that. If you do have it, you then also have to work your, you have to dedicate yeah. your life to it and then you can be great. And also luck. The third thing is yes. luck. Luck is a factor too. But like, and I think that's true for, in, when I got more into cooking and stuff. But you can be great without luck. Like, you're just not going to get recognition. Because you know? I know people, that's true. Yes. But to like succeed at a real high yeah, level, yeah, yeah. luck is a factor. But like, I had that realization about cooking at some point years ago now, because I love to cook. And I'll tell you right now, like, I've got friends and stuff. I've known people that like they have it. They just yeah. have it. They just have that thing with food. And some of them are real into it. Some of them are not, but some people just have it when it comes to culinary arts. And like me as a hobbyist cooker of things, I, I, I do not have it. I've just like worked. I've practiced a lot and it's a big hobby of mine, but I was not born with it when it comes to cooking and I'll never, I'll never be great. I can only. When ever did you be start like, really trying? Really trying, probably. I mean, like twenty five, probably twenty four, twenty five, something yeah, like that. I was. I mean, make... I started learning how to cook. Period. When I was like sixteen, but all throughout college, I was impressing my friends by making like spaghetti and you know right. and meat sauce and stuff. You know what I mean? Because I don't. I just feel like this is me personally. I mean, this is my ego, but I'm applying it to you too. Like, I think it's very possible that you have, you know, look, we have a long running thing where it's like, you be sending me pictures of stuff that you make that look fantastic. But anytime I ever, ever, ever am with you, you're like, mm -hmm. Hey, I, I bought some bean dip. Let's just hit with this, which is fine. <laughs> you don't want to spend the, you know, you want to spend the time with, with me not, and that's fine. But my point yeah. is to this day, I don't think I've ever had the pleasure 
of tasting a Corey Forrester dish. I'm probably scared. So I can't say this with certainty, but based on the videos and clips that I've seen, I do believe it's very possible that you do in fact have it. But I think you uh, do too. Cause I everything I've taken that, you know, personally, I, but I, I what, believe it may be true. What I'm saying is though, you already define yourself as a hobbyist. So that's your attitude. What I'm suggesting is, is that if you had gotten into cooking with the same passion that you got into comedy and writing, things might be different. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you never know because you go into it with like, I'm just a hobbyist, whatever. But if you had that thing in your head that was like, I want to work at a fucking Michelin star restaurant. I came from Salina and this is my dream. Again, there's no way to fucking know. But like, I know you, dude. Like, when you put your fucking head down, you do shit. And like, right now, why would you do that with food? They would take too much time out of your day to like learn all that shit about food. You got to right. work. You got to make money. And I feel the same way about like, there's a cup. There's so many things where like, I, there are things where I go, I could never fucking do that. Don't get me wrong. But when right. it comes to certain things, especially like in the arts and some things, I'm like, I think that I think that if I'd applied myself to that as much as I did comedy, I would have hit it that too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, I don't know. Um, but like, there's some people that because when you say you don't have it, bro, I'm t there's some people that could burn fucking water. Man, you know what I mean? I mean, frankly, my dad was always like that. He had to learn how to cook anything at all because he became a single father and he had to feed right. us. And it's like, bless his heart, he did his best. But like, right. he he literally, at the beginning, he didn't know how to boil water, dude. And he never really, that's the whole reason I started learning how to cook when I was a teenager was because I love my dad. He's fat, great. He eat. But he had, he had like four or five things that he could reliably make, you know, and like, and really that's, all just, you need. that's just what it was. Yeah, it was fine. But, you know, again, I was fat. I wanted some variety. Right. So I was like, I'm trying, I'm trying to learn about these noodles, you know. But anyway, what's the uh, other headline? Uh, it's, well, it's a couple things here. Uh, first off, I, I, I picked up a copy of Globe magazine, which is mm -hmm. a, uh, I don't know if it's actually a British tabloid, uh, but every time I pass it, it seems to have main, like it's some British shit that's the top. Deal. Right. Well, then, I mean, the goddamn British royals are like tabloid fixtures That's in this true. country and always have been. Um, That's true. So. But the Kardashians are on the one beside it all the time. True. You know? So I didn't know if like they just right. skewed that way. Of course, mm -hmm. Globe, it's global. Kardashians mm -hmm. are local, whatever the fuck. Um, the headline here is after six long months, brave Kate comes out of hiding. She wasn't hiding. She was recovering from cancer. You assholes hiding, yeah. hiding. Yeah. Despicable journalism. I mean, it's, oh, yeah, but dude, they, like, I mean, I mean I, this ain't I'm not breaking ground nothing. here. Right, say, this ain't telling nobody nothing, but literally yesterday, I was at the grocery store last night, and I saw, like, a National Enquirer or something like that, yeah. and there was a headline on there that was, like, uh, it was something like, freaky celeb body parts. Like, <laughs> you won't believe what's Bill, on yeah. fucking, you know, uh, Natalie Portman's leg, or whatever the fuck Bill is. Clinton's like, third dick. Yeah, right. It, it That was literally, like, the premise, and it was, like, yeah. a headline on the front page. It was, like, we're gonna show you the gross and weird deformities yeah. of these people, and it's, like, all freak showy and pointing and laughing and stuff, but, uh, I'll say this Globe, about, Globe is based in Boca Raton, Florida. Okay, well, um, I'll say this about the Globe versus the National Enquirer, at least. The Globe is despicable journalism, but, like, it is true that Bray, that Kate came out after six months. That is true, right? It's their mm -hmm. phraseology. It's their despicable way of taking something that actually happened and skewing it to, uh, uh, you know, turn it into some sort of little controversial bite. The National Enquirer just straight up be making shit up. They just straight, like, I feel like the Globe at least starts with a kernel of the truth. Dude. The National Enquirer will be like, Tommy Lee Jones had a, a proctology exam and they found an alien in his asshole. That was one of the wildest parts for me personally, and we don't do politics on this show, but like Trump's whole criminal trial that he had. Yeah. One of the wildest parts to me was the whole element of it where he entered into this business arrangement with the national Enquirer to like bury stories and stuff like that, right. which like they found like did happen when that first happened. I was like, I was like, dude, well, hold on. Wait a minute. They'd be telling the truth sometimes. Or like people <laughs> think that I was like, what do you mean? He like paid them to not cover a story. I thought, I thought they just made literally everything up yeah, all right. the time. Like that, I found that pretty mind That's a blowing, bit in Men in Black. Remember, Tommy Lee Jones is like, he went to get a National Enquirer and Will Smith it, is like... I think it's the Weekly World News. In yeah, the, in but it was, it was supposed to be the National... I mean, it was like... No, a, no, no. I think it was... You know, you remember the Weekly World News? They were like... Uh, oh, I thought the, it was just a parody. No, it's... I mean, it was, but it... So, 
do you remember the weekly world news? Maybe. Hold on. Let me, I, let I don't me think look they're it around anymore. I've already got it. I'll I'll show it to you. Yeah, right please. Because I googled funniest tabloid headlines and I oh, haven't good. found anything that I haven't. I'm disappointed. In oh yeah, results. I remember them. I specifically remember that. So, yeah, th yeah, this was huge. Bat child was <laughs> Bat everywhere. Child. So like this, <laughs> them, like we were just talking about, like their whole thing was like, yeah, no, that we we making all this up. Yeah, right. Like right. No, literally none of this is true, and everybody knew that. So it was almost a parody of tabloids, but it was yeah, still like hits. it does kind of hit. It didn't. I like it wasn't exact. The onion hits way harder for uh, sure, obviously, but it was like. Kind of, sort of oniony, but for tabloids. So this the is joke, like the War of the Worlds in tabloid form, right? The, the, uh, yes, exactly. The, uh, the joke in Men in Black was that actually the thing, the tabloid that everyone famously understands is all made up and is insane. Actually, yeah. that's the real news that's really happening, right? And the so other stuff was, is uh, bullshit. Yeah, it yeah. was a weekly world news thing. But anyway, we're going to talk about the Olympics because that's what's going on in the world, and we're patriots. We're going to do that right after this. Y'all, warmer, sunnier days, well, they are calling. Fuel up uh, for them with factors no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals in time for summer thanks to a menu of chef crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart. Thank God, dude, because I, you know, I'm trying to have some semblance of a summer body, even though, of course, we're, I guess we're getting close to the end of it. Heck, I yeah, don't know. Not, no, not in the summer. I'm without factor. I'm very calorie dumb. Yeah, so man, it's nice. Too. It's nice yeah. to have them be calorie smart yeah. on my behalf. Yeah, and they got the Protein Plus, which is really good because my, my yeah. child snacks on the stuff that I eat, and I want to make sure he's getting the protein. Also, keto. Keto's so hot right now, everybody. Mm -hmm. Factors Fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great-tasting meals. Make today the day that you kickstart your new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? Dude, they got 35 different meals from 60 different add-ons every week. Uh, you, you do breakfast, dessert. You know, you can stay fueled with all these nutritious options, which are also delicious uh, restaurant quality stuff, man. Like Trey, you, me and you've been talking about that. Uh, what is it? The jalapeno cheddar chicken or whatever? That's a personal favorite of mine. Yeah, they got a lot of good stuff, though, Cho. I tell you, they do this. I've said it before, but Factor, they sent us some stuff to try out. And then Katie just signed us up without Likewise. even saying anything to me because it hits so hard for her. And it hits for me, too, because... They got a lot of good stuff going on at Factor. Anything you need, you can crush your wellness goals this summer with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious. From breakfast to dessert, they got it all. Treat yourself to restaurant quality meals with premium ingredients, and you can keep your kitchen time to a minimum. Factor's meals are ready in two minutes flat. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Take all the hassle out of getting your food in, baby. Enjoy effortless support. For your lifestyle, choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat entirely, or just eat a well-balanced diet. Whatever you need, Factor's there for you. So here's what you do. Head to factormeals.com slash POA50 and use the code POA50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month after that. That's code POA50 at factormeals.com slash POA50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Y'all, our next our next sponsor needs no introduction. You've seen the ads. You've heard us talk about it a million times by now, but we're going to talk about it once again. I bet there's a big party, pun intended, that kind of wants to try it, wants to hear us talking about it. What am I talking about? Blue Chew. That's right, Wainer stuff. This isn't your grandpa's blue pill. This is the one, the OG chewable tablet to have better sex right now. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but at a fraction of the cost and in a chewable form. The process is very simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped directly to your door. That's the best part of the whole thing. It's all done on your computer on the internet there, which means no more visits to the doctor's office, no awkward wainer conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy, running into your high school girlfriend or librarian or principal or football coach while you're getting your wainer pills. None of that. You can take these anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead to get down or you can just be ready to get down whenever an opportunity comes up. Blue Chew wants you to have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Cho, tell them more. 
Oh my God, I love it. And a lot of people are always asking me, they're like, Corey, uh, does it work? And I'm like, dude, it makes my ding dong harder than trying to figure out why someone would dedicate their entire life into getting good at fencing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fencing. All right. They always say first impressions are the most part, uh, most important. What about lasting impressions? It's time to get off the couch, baby, and go back to work. My favorite time of the month is when that little white envelope shows up. And I believe it's my wife's favorite time, too, because while I can do uh, pretty good on my own, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with a little PEDs down on my P-New-Wees. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Nailed Women it. say there's nothing sexier than confidence, and Blue Chew can help give you the confidence where it counts. So if you could benefit from some extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free. Not a typo, people. When you use our promo code POA at checkout, just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code POA. To receive your first month absolutely free, visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Ski. Get you a new dick. New dick. All right, and we're back. Cho, you've been watching the Olympics. You're feeling all patriotic. I definitely, I don't know about you. I mean, I do know about you, but it's. I saw a couple of like TikTok videos and stuff from people pointing out like, you know, they'll be like me half of the time. And it, they're sitting there like, this country pisses me off so much sometimes. <laughs> this fucking country's got so many problems I fucking hate. It. And it's like, it cuts to me when the Olympics are on and they're fucking waving flags like, yeah, get wrecked, motherfuckers, whatever. And I'm yeah. absolutely 100% that way with i'm with the Olympic. you man i have i want us to whip everybody ass i don't care what kind of story they got i don't care don't you know what i mean it's like like in a sport in an objective <clears throat> sports terminology a team like south sudan who mark told us earlier yeah. they don't have one That's, indoor gymnasium in the entire yeah. country if they were if playing a team anybody like else. that if a team like that managed to beat team usa that would be objectively this massive sports story but i'm over here like put your boot on their fucking throat yeah. beat them by 50 points don't Show don't who give the them fuck we are yeah send yeah. them back to the goddamn gymless country with nothing that's yeah. what i want yeah matter of fact buy them a gym and say come back next time and see what you can do flex <laughs> yeah. on them yeah uh no dude i'm the same way now i again i haven't been watching as much as you um but yeah, I was actually like attempting to work on some sort of bit about it because, and again, we don't do politics here, but just I'll skim over it. I'm working on this bit about like these random spurts of nationalism that come out like Tourette's because like I hate that, like I can't stand what nationalism like means realistically because it's like just randomly people will be like, fuck the USA and fuck everybody but the USA don't come to our country. Everywhere's commie, queer, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, dude, where the fuck are you? Go somewhere. You know what I mean? But when it comes to the Olympics, I'm like, fuck every other country. You goddamn commie queer suck my dick. You know, I'm like, you, yeah, yeah I, like I am. And another and thing, if you're trying to make that into a bit, one thing uh, that comes to my mind, and again, we don't normally do politics, but here we go. The fucking, a great irony about that whole deal is that it seems to me, based on Twitter and shit like that, that a lot of the people who profess to be the biggest patriots and have the most nationalism or whatever, mm -hmm they shit all over the Olympics and team USA. Like they've made one yeah. of our best, they made our best rugby player who was kicking ass over there. They made her cry because right. they said Alana she Mar. had a dick, said she was a man. Yeah. Right. And they, uh, because France got all Frenchy and gay during the opening ceremonies, right. they were just like, fuck the Olympics entirely. And it's like, what does that have to do with any of our athletes trying to win gold? Med like you should still be, fucking USA, USA right. during the Olympics, regardless of what the host country does. But they're well, like, no, I ain't watching none of this shit. Well, that's it's like, the thing. I thought y'all were the number one paint. Like, we're the, we're the huge queers over here wearing flag hats and getting into it. And they're the, you know, red-blooded patriots who are like, fuck this commie shit. I ain't even watching this. And it's well, like, see, what is going on here? Well, that's that's the thing that really pisses me off. And that's, I think, if you're, if you're on Reddit at all, there are entire subreddits dedicated to this. Like, Pretty much the thing people hate about Americans the most, and me too, mm -hmm. is that we think that everything is about us or ours or mm -hmm. whatever. So basically the whole thing- To be thing fair to us, us, a huge percentage of things are about us. Uh, of course, <laughs> of course. But the Olympics aren't. The Olympics right. are global. They're a global yeah. sport, right? But the um, So these Americans that are bitching are trying to apply. They're like, this is so wrong. How could they do this? We don't do this in America. And it's like, well, they're in fucking France. Exactly. Like a, a place right. that y'all have 
continuously called queer for years. That's what, what I'm saying. Like, did you what expect? did you expect France right. to do? You know yeah, how right. you feel about France. You thought they wouldn't be queer when they're yeah. hosting the Olympics. Of course they are. It has nothing to do with Team USA yeah. in any sport. Like, it shouldn't affect you at all in terms and, of how you feel about the Olympics if you're an when, American, if you're a real patriot. That's when I was opinion. When I was a kid, and this still happens, some, this, well, this will happen sometime to me where, like, I'll be over at my mama's house and maybe I'll say something that don't hit for her. And I was like, I'll get the fuck over no, yourself. Or, what, yeah, not. right. And I'll be like, I'll get the fuck over yourself. And she's like, look, it, when we're in my house, we play by my rules. And I'm like, you know what? You're fair. Because when I was a kid, I was taught, like, when you're at somebody's house, if they have ridiculous customs, you just got to roll with it because you're yes. in their house. And if you Absolutely. don't like it, get the fuck out, right? Well, right. we're in somebody else's house. So if right. they want to fucking suck dicks on a table and pretend uh -huh. they're Jesus, which they didn't do, but that's that, what they're saying they did. That's the other part, too, is like they didn't, they weren't even doing what everybody got pissed no, off at them for they doing. They were just either. sitting like, in a fucking table. Well, they were doing it was the Feast of Dionysus, which right. makes complete sense because the Olympics <clears throat> are Greek. Greek. It's a right. Greek mythology reference in a historically Greek. Uh, undertaking that actually makes sense but again because of america's egocentrism and stuff all the christians in america were like they're making fun of the lord right now and it's right. like that had nothing not, to do not with a the thing. lord they ever. were actually they were talking about several gods not right. one you know because which yeah, i mean hell, i guess even that they would hate that, too right they, that it, would still be blasphemy they would be like well there ain't several gods of course <laughs> they, but again this is not an american fucking right. thing you know at least where I come from, we used to be real good about, hey, you do what you do over there. I'll do I, what I do over here. What the fuck ever. Like, That's we gone, used, That is fucking long gone, dude. But, yeah, I mean, the yeah, I know that you've got some facts, and I'm sure one of them is like, you know, the first Olympic Games took place in 8th century B.C. in Olympia, Greece, where mm -hmm. they worshipped. It was probably, most likely, an ode to Zeus because mm -hmm. they named it after Mount fucking Olympus. You know what I'm saying? So, like, mm -hmm. hi like historically, this is about worshiping several gods, and more importantly, it's a global fucking game. Right. Yeah. No. I. Yeah. I know. It's. Uh. It's insane. But the Olympics have always hit for me. I have been watching some stuff. I watched our women's rugby team. I don't even. Women, I did men, too. Would you text me? And I was like, right. I'm tuning into this. She was wrecking motherfuckers. Dude. It was fucking awesome. And I'm not yeah. just saying that. Not, it ain't just patriotism. I don't, I've never really watched rugby, period. I'm aware of rugby, but I've never watched men or women play, really. And I just turned on the Olympic coverage on the main channel, and the U.S. women's rugby team was playing. I was like, well, I'll check this out. And it was fucking rad, bro. Yeah. But in large part, because our girls was just running roughshod over Brazil's ass. Right. Brazil didn't have nothing for our, we just bigger, faster, stronger. We just Derek Henrying everybody. Like they just couldn't. It was domination. Yeah. We were like, yeah, super, we get to use our hands in this one, motherfucker. What about that? Which super hit for me, and I was like, dude, this shit is awesome. And our best player, uh, Alana Mayer, I think I'm saying that oh, right. I, I, th Alana I thought Mayer. it was Alana Mar. Ma what Mar Mayer? Yeah, yeah. It's M a h e r well, Mar. I could, I could be wrong. I've been You're saying a lot not. of times. I mean, that's how Bill Mar says it. That probably okay. wouldn't have heard that comparison. But anyway, uh, Alana Mar. Um, our best player, again, who was the Derrick Henry on the field that day, just like they had nothing for her. No. She, she scored the equivalent. Again, I'm a football fan. I don't watch rugby. But she did the equivalent of scoring like three different 75-plus yard touchdowns. Yeah. She just like busted through everybody and just smoked their ass while stiff-arming them on the way. Like she was dominating. And I guess because she's a woman and women ain't supposed to hit at sports and she hit real hard. People said she obviously has a dick and started going after her on the internet and it uh, made her cry. And it's like, this is, this is our, she's representing this country. Like, what are you, right. I just, I hate that shit. It makes me so mad. It's also, like, if we can't come together, if you can't get on board for the goddamn Olympics, then I mean, does this country actually even hit for you? Do you know what I, I mean? Like, couldn't agree more. And also, by the way, like it's so, it's so indicative of the, 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 how, how, we are coached and i mean that from you know both political both both major political parties or whatever and i say that because the idea of accusing a, a strong woman of having a dick is it's not completely brand new but how widespread it is is brand new because like i made a point in a video that i made of like dude i had lunch ladies bigger and more badass than her never want that, that could whip the shit out of us and never once did we think 
I bet she's secretly a guy. We were just like, that's a big old bitch. That's, you know what I mean? That's because I swear to God, they collectively, the people that hate that, I swear to God, they didn't even find out. <laughs> I know <laughs> about trans people until like 2016. Like literally yeah. they didn't, they didn't know about it. And right. then they found out about it like eight years ago and have really lost their shit over it ever since. Cause yeah, no, you're right. That never, ever would have come up before. No one ever a big old gal. Like, She's a yeah, softball right. player. They might like call, they might call them a lesbian, like, a lesbian. Yeah, yeah. Or right, some yeah. slur, whatever, but it was never yes. that they had a dick. It was right. that clearly they are, they are, you know, they like women or they're not a, they're a tomboy. No, it was a tomboy. I, I, was about, I was about to say, tomboy. I was just about to say when I was in, when I was in school in a country ass town, just like it, it was in Chickamauga, I'm sure. There were so many tomboys, and it was the most. They identified as that. I know no one had any problem with it whatsoever. It was just no. like, oh, she's a tomboy, and that's just like, what are you going to do? And I feel like back then the attitude from a lot of like redneck redneck dudes, especially, would be like, I mean, hell, you know, who wouldn't want to be a man? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, but it's like, funny. Yeah, of, course too. She, well, of course, she's a tomboy. We hit harder, you know. And it's funny too because I wouldn't some want of wear dresses neither. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's funny because some of them would even go as far as to say, like, I mean, dude, even when she was young, like just a baby, like you could always just tell she was a little bit, she just wasn't girly at all. It's almost mm -hmm. like there was something in her DNA and her brain that sort of just made, made her be a certain way. And that, right. but, but, you know, what yes. the fuck ever. But nobody. It's like, but to be, to be clear, obviously, like you could be a tomboy and be a totally, you know, straight. I'm a woman all the way. You could be a tomboy and end up being trans. You could be a tomboy and be a lesbian. It could be, it don't mean nothing is what no, I'm saying. And people didn't used to read anything into any of it. It's just some kids be that way. And, uh, but yeah, no, nah, I don't know. Things have changed, but you brought up fencing earlier. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was, I watched some fencing too. And I was, uh, I'm not, I'm sure I've seen fencing before. And actually fun fact, I took fencing in college. Get the fuck out of here. An, you and them. Was this when Chin Strap was playing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so you look good in them leotards. And uh, and it was, uh, you know, it was. It, I. It's so funny that I was shocked. But first of all, I've always been a big nerd, always big nerd and dork at heart. But like, I genuinely was surprised when I walked into that class, and it was filled with dorks. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. like D and D type. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm study the blade. It makes you know, sense. like that, like. I didn't see that coming somehow. Like I thought, I thought there was going to be a bunch of fucking, you know, super rad black guys and cool yeah. people hanging out in there. And it's like, no, no, they were, they were on scholarship for something else, buddy. Yeah. And so, uh, but the only thing I really remember about it was I remember our, our professor, our teacher who was a TA, he was like a 25 year old who was just doing this for his own college credit. But, uh, our teacher, he used to start every class with, if anyone thinks they, if anyone has anything important that they want to share, that the whole class needs to, they think the whole class needs to know, or they'd like to observe, then go ahead and let us know right now. And he started it that way most days. And sometimes people would do something or whatever. And I remember, I remember one day I stepped forward and I was like, if we could, uh, we actually, need to get out of Iraq. No, I said, I mean, I was definitely thinking that also, but I said, uh, I was like, if we could observe, a moment of silence, please, because I don't know if you guys know who he is, but Mitch Hedberg passed away <laughs> last night. He's a great stand-up comedian, and uh, it's very sad. And actually, because I'm in a room full of nerds and dorks and stuff, they were all like, hell yeah, brother. Like, yeah, everybody, right. everybody, like, got very solemn. And, uh, I cried like and a appreciated it. Yeah, no, I was like, I'm saying, I was like, really, I was very upset. I was doing stand-up yeah. at the time. Yeah, and I was like, we need to we all need to take a moment to observe this loss, you know, in my fencing class, which I, uh, I, I do maintain. And who knows how, I mean, dude, obviously gone too soon. You never know what would happen, but like he was a, he was a one of a kind fucking mm -hmm. brilliant. Like, I don't know. He was like, he, he was like a, he's like somebody that comes out of the Renaissance that you talk about. Cause he's, he's more, as popular now as he's ever been. Honestly, True. maybe more popular. He's also one of the most influential comics. Yes, that's ever I wanted to be him he, so bad. Because he is inspired. So, and there's certain he comics. Crushed who, at Twitter. There's certain comics that we, we all know, you know, like Bill Hicks inspired so many comics to want to be like Bill Hicks. Like it's definitely, at the, like, there's plenty of comics who've inspired a lot of people, but I think, I feel like Mitch Hedberg, you could argue, has inspired as many or more than pretty much any other comedian. Couldn't agree ever. more. I couldn't agree more. Matter of fact, I did a festival in Chattanooga. I headlined a festival there, and afterwards they had this like separate show where they there was a bunch of comedians, a lot from New York, a lot from everywhere else, and they were all way younger, like way younger. 
and I and I'm not suggesting that they stole or ripped off or anything, but I knew and I asked a lot of them, and they were like, "Oh yeah, for sure." I could just tell. I was like that generation because to them, Mitch Hedberg was a classic. You know what I mean? He yeah. was contemporary for us, but to right. them, it was like when I would listen to old uh, Robert Klein. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's also like just so people know, listen, inside baseball comedy stuff, what y'all may not know is he's also inspirational in a different way, at least I think of it this way, because there's a famous story that uh, one of the things that made Mitch Hedberg popular in the early 2000s that really popped for him was his Comedy Central half hour, his Comedy Central Presents, which it got huge. It pro- I mean, might have been their biggest half hour they ever had. It was. Maybe. Either him or Dane Cook, because Dane Cook popped yeah. off that too. Yeah. But, um, but either way, Dane that Cook was, actually popped off premium blend. That I was think. his first. I know. I also know the backstory of Dane Cook's uh, yeah. a half hour too. But the Mitch Hedberg one, though, the story goes. Of course, I wasn't there, but what everybody in comedy says is he showed up to record his Comedy Central half hour, which ended up pop, you know, being his breakthrough, and uh, just ate shit Bombed. in the room that night. Bombed like that's got why he sat down. Just did thirty minutes to fucking crickets. The whole like the they he he got nothing from that crowd they sweetened it with like a laugh track and put it out anyway. And it became one of the most like legendary half hours of all time. And as a comedian, that's like insane. It's well, it's also, but it is insane, but in a way that makes you feel it's inspirational. Yeah, you, know absolutely. I mean? like you can tell yourself, you're like, okay, you know what? Sometimes the material works. So, right. That yeah, crowd exactly. sucks. It's like that clearly night. that because some comics have the philosophy, which I respect, but disagree with no, so that, it's bad crowd. that it's never the crowd. It's like, right. I don't care how bad the crowd is. It's your job to get them. And again, I respect that philosophy, but it just ain't true. But when sometimes, you're taping a half hour, sometimes you don't have, it's the crowd. But, when, but the thing like, is, when you're taping a half hour, you don't have the time to get them back and then get right. it. You have to get right into your stuff, you know. Yeah. But that, but such a testament to like, yeah, like you're saying, the material works. He's one of the few comics though that his energy would not change regardless. Like no, if I he was, was up a. At, the crowd, he was one of those. It's like a crowd was either on board or they weren't. Right. And if they but were I'm on saying, board with him, he was going to crush. And if they weren't, he was going to bomb. And that's just how it was. But what I'm saying is like you, I, when I was told that, I went back and watched. I was like, I would have never guessed he was eating shit. If I'm eating shit, oh, I see you, you can mean. tell. Yeah. There's a difference in me. But his right. cadence and stuff, like he just goes, like it's set. Right. It's going to be said the way it's going to be said because they're one liners. You know right. what I mean? Anyways, a fun fact for y'all that don't know before we move on. They also, the story also goes that Richard Pryor live on the Sunset Strip, not that he bombed in the room, but he ran that exact same hour in the, the exact store. same room in front of a different crowd, but in the same room, same exact material the night before and bombed his ass off and ate a dick and got no laughs at all. One of the worst sets he's ever had. Came back the next night, didn't change a word, did the same thing in the same room with a different crowd. And it Classic. became one of, one of the most uh, legendary stand up specials of all time. So back to the Olympics. Thought it'd be funny to look up like what are some uh, esoteric or odd Olympic sports that have mm-hmm. existed Ooh. over the history of the modern games. Um, so I got a couple for you here. To see what you think about them. Number one, uh, we got solo synchronized swimming. What do you think about that? You ever <laughs> watch synchronized swimming? Uh, yes, I do because I like to watch it and slow it down and see their faces. Me t- all- tell me about it, dude. <laughs> I- <laughs> no disrespect. It is so hard for me to take seriously when they play like the replays and stuff of synchronized swimming because they slow it yeah. down. And I don't, why do they make those faces? Like I don't, every I just, time their faces look, I think like it's their just faces look insane. They try to breathe when they can while, breathe and not breathe when they can't breathe. I get the coordination and everything required to do that, especially with other people. It is impressive and takes a lot of Have talent. Have you seen some of the thumbnails like, on your fucking um, YouTube videos? Huh? Yeah. Seen, right. Well, yes. you know, anybody in one moment. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I know that I'm dumber. A, I know that I'm a like a goofy motherfucker. Like me <laughs> looking dumb like hits, you know, like an Olympic <laughs> athlete. But, uh, it, but it's wild how like I mean sometimes it's literally like this. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. But I don't know. You ever, did you ever so see that movie Airheads with Brendan Fraser, Steve Buscemi, and, and uh, oh, yeah. Adam Sandler? Oh yeah. Remember how their band name was The Lone Rangers? Yeah. And Joe Mantegna was like that how can you be there's three of you you're not lone you can't pluralize lone ranger that's how i feel about solo synchronized swimming it like makes how no can, sense how can you synchronize something you're doing alone like it the can't sync, be synchronized with sync anything else the music's coming maybe? together right i mean synchronized I guess, means you got yeah but they yes. don't call what simone biles does synchronized uh right 
uh, just, gymnastics. It's it just makes, it's performative or whatever. You're just out there dancing in the water by yourself, and that's fine. That don't not hit for me, but it, it don't. But, no, no, no. It, it, you need two. Two is when it becomes it's because the impressive part. Okay, look, I'm not saying that someone doing all that cool shit in the water don't hit, but the impressive part is watching two people do it at the exact same goddamn time. Like that's the fucking skill. You know yes. what I mean? I mean, yeah, I agree. I can barely so, use a noodle in the water and I'm talking shit. So we got, you know, obviously track and field, long jump, high jump. For a while they did those events also with horses. Horse mm-hmm. long jump and Ooh. horse high jump. Ooh, right? they were still I know why they can't. I mean, they still do horse things though there, you know. Yeah, but they don't make them jump real high because then they could fall down and break their horse leg. I mean, yeah, you're probably right. That probably is what the problem is. I am right because I have a story later similar. Oh, (laughs) really? It's so hard. Okay. All right. It's it's so hard. Because I was, this one, I'm kind of, this one, I sort of felt like, I was like, I don't, I don't find that that weird considering the other horse events that happen. It's like, that's very normal. Because the argument is like, for people that don't get it, and we've talked about this on the show before, I used to be, before we went to the UK, we made fun on the show of like horse stuff in like Yellowstone or whatever. We're like, yeah, that sure is some horse stuff they're doing. Right, right. But then we went to the UK and took horse class. Yeah. Right? We went to horse class over there. And after that, we were like, okay, that's impressive. As it's fuck. insane. Dude, that they can just make, take it off on one. That they can get those horses to do that and, and do that in that way. So like I've done a total 180 on horse stuff. Yeah. And so because I now have an appreciation for horse stuff, I don't know what is different or weird about having like this particular horse stuff, a high jump or a long jump, except I'm sure you're right. It's that it kills the horses. And they're like, yeah. they were like, we can't be doing that anymore. That's probably what it was. Hey, make a mental note. When I'm talking later, please pull up the uh, Snoop Dogg commentating the horse stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, anyways, proceed. Uh, so we also got plunging for distance. Uh, I'm plunging for distance. Yeah. Sorry. So, it was like diving, to but see how far you get, you see how far you drift underwater before coming up to the surface, uh, in a maximum of a minute. So you, and you just can't di- move your feet. Right. Yes. You just dive in and just see how far you drift before you come up. How, how do they, uh, how do they measure it? Like, they well, they measure it where you come up at. Everybody dives off to of the same place oh, 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 and dude, wherever was, you come up. Bro, 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 bro. Yeah. I, I was thinking straight down. <laughs> I was no, thinking, no, no, no. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? That makes right. I'm how so deep stu- you can get Bro, before you I'm come, yeah. so fucking stupid. <laughs> Listen to that, that. That was not even near the dumbest thing I've said on a podcast in seven days. When I was filling in for you on weekly skews, Mark was talking about a, a tech mogul who got injured uh, in his car elevator. And my genuine response was, God damn, how big is his car? I right. meant that. I yeah. meant that with every fiber of my being. So Mark said like it happened in an elevator car, as in the the box that is an elevator. No, like, no, no. It which was they call a it, car. Right? No, no, no. It was the it was an elevator for the place. He he has so many that cars that elevates his cars. His cars. That it it takes his cars out of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, makes yeah. sense. But, yeah, but I, mean, I thought they also mother- do. They do call the elevator thing like a car, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. They okay. do. They yeah, do. Okay. But this right. was the play. But like either way, what yeah. they definitely don't do is have is an elevator in, in your fucking car. Yeah. Yeah, I could see them having them for them big uh, buses in the UK for like a uh, uh, handicap dis- disability act purposes or something. Yeah. I don't even know if they have a disability act over there. But all right. And so the funny thing about the plunging for distance, aside from just what it is, is that this only ever happened once at the 1904 Olympics, which took place in St. Louis, Missouri. Ooh, yeah. And all five, all five contestants were slaves. In the whole event, event were Americans. Oh. No one else. It, it, we were like hosting the Olympics. Yeah. And just made something up that only we were a part of. <laughs> Got all three gold. Like, and then counted those medals, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. So, yeah, uh, let's see. Live pigeon shooting. Ah, that was the thing. That was the thing I was going to bring up. Paris Paris in 1900. Uh, I just watched the shooting yesterday, the uh, the riflery event or whatever, and I texted y'all about it because uh, our guy, the U.S. guy, came in fifth, yes. and I find that to be completely unacceptable. And mm-hmm. to me, we should be like dream team level dominating all gun related Olympic sport. Like nobody should be able to touch us in gun stuff at the Olympics, in my opinion, but we got, uh, yeah, you got to have, fifth. 
you got to change I, the setting. You got to put us in like a warehouse or some sort of depository. You know what I mean? On a, a high school, roof, yeah, yeah. high school, like we'll fucking take it. Yeah. But so, but yeah, so a rivalry sport in 1900. Uh, so the one that I watched, they're shooting like skeet, you know, like some yeah. of the disc things. That's what they're shooting. But uh, in 1900 in Paris, also in Paris, uh, they just killed regular pigeons who got released. Uh, 300 of them. The way, it got, the way it worked was you kept going until you missed two in a row. When you missed two in a row, you're eliminated, right? So the guy that ended up winning was from Belgium, and he got uh, he killed 21 pigeons uh, before you know he eliminated himself, and that was the high that was the high mark. So he got the gold medal in live pigeon shooting over the course of the whole event. 300 pigeons were sacrificed to this uh, to mm-hmm. this athletic endeavor. You damn sure can't do that now. No, hell no. Peter lose their minds, baby. Even though uh, pigeons ought not be. Right. Yeah. D- weren't we just talking about pigeons that you were yes. talking about? What'd you, what'd you say about pigeons? They so like pigeons, just like dogs and cats, we domesticated them right. but to then work just for left, us. But and then, then we fired them, them to their own devices. And right. so now yeah. they don't know how to hit unless they're getting right. breadcrumbs. Hit so like, being bird. That's why they're like city birds and stuff is because yeah. they like rely on humans. Yeah. So to like exist, we should, we should we, just shoot them all. Yeah. And you used to have that bit about pigeons, though, where you acted like they hit for you. They're all named Carl. They, they do hit for me. Yeah. yeah they, right. they, oh, that's fucking very dumb and don't make sense. But the bit always worked. It did. You're right. You, I mean, I mean, bro, you know, you've had so many of those. <laughs> so many bits where it's like, I, and even me, like when I hear it the first time, I laugh. I'm like, that's great. Then I hear it the second, third, fourth time or whatever. And at a certain point, I'm like, wait a minute. What does that even mean? And then I started thinking about it more. I'm like, that don't make no sense <laughs> at all. But it like works every time. Every time it gets a big laugh. And yeah, I've, I've been, I know you've had at least, I don't know, four or five of them over yeah. the course of us touring together. Because I'm physical, but, uh, bro. Physical comedy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But yeah, the every pigeon is named Carl or whatever. Yeah. That one was definitely one of those. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so another one on this list is the, modern currently existing pentathlon which i have thought is weird before the pentathlon that's five, right? so that's five events which are swimming fencing show jumping long distance running and shooting a pistol and it's like <laughs> how do you land on that those things those things you know how does yeah. that become the five things i don't get it this one is old timey as fuck and very uh, raven of the past at the 1912 olympics in stockholm they uh they held Olympic pistol dueling, right? Mm. But um they didn't like shoot at each other. They had to shoot at mannequins representing each other. So it's like they kind of just shot at target. They just like spun around and shot at a target, right? But the target had a blazer on and was like <laughs> meant to be the other guy so it's like i totally would have killed your ass just now but like i kind of can't believe that even in 1912 they weren't just shooting each other oh you know for what sure I mean? like i can't believe they were past that um in uh 1900 in paris they had a swimming uh, a water-based obstacle race which you know i like mean from harry potter i can see how that hits yeah they had to like they had to swim the whole time, climb up a pole, go climb over a row of boats, swim under another row of boats. It was like that Japanese game show. Yes, exactly. Like a Japanese Wipe game out. show. Yes, but yes, but in but in Paris in 1900. Yeah. And I mean, that, like, you know, I'd watch that. Um, Fuck yeah, I, I'd watch that. Last two, art was an Olympic event. Yeah. Um, yes, it was. Which I'd heard, I'd heard that. 1928 to 1941. Correct. Right. And I, According to this, it started in Stockholm in 1912 and went to London in 1948 for uh, sport-inspired artworks from architecture, literature, music, painting, and sculpture. So anything that's like sport-themed in one of those genres or or formats or whatever you want to call it could be eligible for it. And they gave out Olympic. And it's like, we were talking earlier about how many different things are art forms or whatever. I, I don't know how you feel, but I am... I do, and there's people who can be great at both, but I do separate art and athletics. athletics. And I think there's things sure. that are like, like to me, sport, <laughs> sports ain't art and arts ain't sports. In my what about opinion, ballet? I was, I was just, I was, I swear and to God, I was, skating. 
I swear to God, I was just about to say the only gray area for me personally is is dancing because they're subjective. Like, I've always been that, weird with that. Because dancing, like, like some people consider dancing. I mean, break dancing is a sport at this Olympics. Some people right. consider dancing like an act, and you do have to be at it. But well, actually, I think choreography is an art is artistic. Right. I think that just hitting real hard at dancing by learning the moves that someone else developed and whatever else. I think that's like being a hitting athlete. I don't know that I think dancing is an art form. In, I hear you in that way. Like, and my thing, my thing about it is, and I, before I say this, you, you could make the art, you could make the argument about boxing, but like those judges are just tallying up points based on punches. Right. But like, right. it's like being a figure skater or whatever, it comes down to what that panel decides. You know what I mean? Whereas yes. like track and field, you fucking win or you don't win. Like it's objective. Like Tom Brady either won the game or he didn't win. It's objective. Dancing, right. it depends on the crowd. Like the, the, the people on the panel. So Figure like, skating is 100% a, a melding of the two. It like, yeah, yeah that's and, art. And, and Simone Biles too. Together, you sure. know what I mean? Yes, like she's got to nail it. But also what if there's a racist judges? on the fucking panel? <laughs> right. Anything that like, requires a massive amount of athleticism and training, but that depends on the subjectivity of judges. Right. Is kind of a, kind it's of great blur, it blurs the lines between like, uh, between because art, art is subjective. And, yeah. But sports right. shouldn't be right. And then the last one, number one in 1900 in Paris, they had competitive poodle clipping. Um, <laughs> 128 competitors in front of a crowd, in front of a crowd of over 6,000 people where God, they had damn. to, uh, clip as much fur off of as many poodles <laughs> as they could. Not they, to make them look good, just to get all the fuck. Just yes, get as much fur off of them as they could and, and off as many of them as they could in a two hour, dude, two hours feels like way too <laughs> way long, too long. To make that. Dude, you're gonna could you not determine that skin? in 30 minutes, 15, right. 20 minutes? Like, yeah. But it's also like, uh, this Goddamn article hot dog with, eating contest is fucking what? 10. Right. But it's also like, you can't cut the same poodle twice. So like, that How means many? they had to have 300 and something poodles with long hair there. And it's like, fucking weird. not every poodle is the same size. Right. You know what I'm saying? And also like, they're not the same temperament. Like right. some poodles could be down with, you know what I mean? You could draw yeah. a bad poodle. You could draw right. like a big ass angry poodle who don't want you clipping it. And that could, that could be the difference between you and the gold, you know, like that ain't, that shit ain't fair. <laughs> Drawing you know? a bad poodle is like the French rodeo right there. Yeah. Oh my fucking right. god! Well, no, that's it for me. Uh, I want to know what you have to say about the Olympics. Let's oh man! Well, I've got some stuff on the uh, ancient Olympics. Uh, so Good. As a, I'm glad. I, I was hoping that we would get into that. Yeah, as I'd mentioned earlier, and I've got some stuff on some more modern Olympics, but I'm actually going to save that to next week because I know there's uh, another thing you want to talk about, and the Olympics are still going on next week, and golf too, which I'm going to want to talk about. Now, that's all fine. We can find more. Yeah, yeah. About. The thing I have, I can save it if you want me to, but I also don't even need to do yeah, it yeah. if you don't want to. It's no, it's to fine. Uh, so in the first Olympic Games, which was 8th eight, century BC in Olympia, Greece, there was only one sport, uh, and it was a foot race. So it was pretty much just like, you know, they decided to do this thing like, hey, Zeus hits, let's run about it, you know. While um, naked, right? Yeah, absolutely. They were 100% mm -hmm. naked. I yeah. assumed covered in baby oil from yes. head to butthole, you know. Yes just out there you listening. do always picture the ancient greeks not only naked but also oiled up oiled while up. naked like that, that's that's just part of their aesthetic in our minds i think yeah and the first olympics like there were it was not the global affair that it is today like only greek men were allowed to participate women weren't even allowed to go like they weren't even not. allowed to, yeah both right. of those things make complete sense in 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 context of the fucking past and the way it was like back then dude i feel like you had yo country, nation, empire, whatever, yeah. and everybody else you just wanted to kill all the time. Yes. Or they wanted to kill you or both. Like you, there wasn't there wasn't no coming together to like have a foot race. It was just like, no, we're gonna send our elephants over there and smush all your houses. That's, That's what that, everybody did. That actually leads me to my next point. Uh they eventually did let other countries in because they wanted someone's ass to kick. You know, right. they were like yes. they wanted it for pride or whatever. But the uh so the event was so popular that so the Persians were invading 
uh, Greece in the summer of 480 BC or something yeah. like that. They did that a bunch of times. They did. Yeah. And the allied Greek city states had to de delay military preparations because uh -huh. so many men were in the Olympics, which like, that's it's funny that they let that I happen. Know. You know what I mean? I, I feel like back then they'd be like, I'll just no. kill you right now. If you yeah. don't go fight this war, but what do you mean I, you want to run? <laughs> no, I hear you. I hear you. But like, I guess that does that does really show you how popular they, them fucking yeah, how games were. Yeah, like, right. Well, I guess, like, dude, those generals were like, no, we won't watch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. that hits for us. Uh, but so before the, before the games back then, messengers called, and I do not know how to pronounce this. I'm going to try, try Spondophori. Uh, they, were, they, were sent at, <laughs> they were sent across uh, the Greek world to announce the Olympic truce or Echiuria, Echiuria, or something uh -huh. like that. So basically it was like they would go out with their little, you know, ladles on or whatever, and they'd blow some fucking horn and they'd be like, the games are going on. So y'all quit fucking being at war. And everybody would be like, I'll oh, let them have their, you know, bullshit or whatever. And each participating city state had to sign up for the truce, uh, which like I said, meant that no war was permitted uh, it, and no arms could be carried into Olympia during this time. You said a minute ago Persia was invading. I was like, that happened a few times. But you said that was in 480 BC. The Olympics in 480 BC de uh, delayed the Persian War. That's what uh -huh. you said, right? Yeah. That was uh, that's that's when the fucking the battle from 300 happened. The Battle of uh, Thermopylae from 300 yeah, the with of the Thermopylae. Spartans. And, yeah. The bat with the Spartans and Leonidas and all that. That's that's when that happened. Was 480 BC correct. in that Persian invasion with uh, Xerxes leading the Persians and all that, famously known as perhaps the most metal and ripped and oiled up battle in the history of mankind based on the documentary 300 uh, by Zack Snyder. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Bro, did you... I, I brought this up before. But did I've that movie hit for me when it came out? Fuck yes, First dude. Of all, Probably drank of a course. monster energy drink. I got had a backwards limp biscuit. So high. I went and watched that at Opera Mills with my boys and I loved it. But And I was broed out at the time, so it hits for me super hard. But I've said this on the show too, but I'm already in it now. Did Did you listen to that song? I sent you about that battle Mane marth no but or uh sabaton yeah, yeah yeah sparta of course i did yeah got on my playlist damn bro. i know son it it'll make you want to pick up an axe so hard <laughs> yeah. part part of the chorus is literally just them screaming slaughter yeah. persians yeah. and i'm like and i'm like you kill all them motherfuckers you know what i mean it's like, it's like take they like, rugs yeah. take they rugs take they rugs i don't give a fuck <laughs> yeah. rip their earrings out yeah. Speaking of that, uh, athletes who broke the rules back in the classic games were publicly flogged and beaten, and sometimes uh, they would just take all their money and be like, fuck you, you're destitute now because you cheated a little bit. What's insane about that is, like, as wild as that is, you're like, wow, pass, don't hit, is that, like, I know this isn't actually happening, but I sent y'all a joke last night. I was watching the ping pong gold medal match Fire. between China and North Korea, and bro... Yeah. They was going hard. It was yeah. fucking, it was intense. Yeah. And I was, I jokingly said to y'all, I was like, it, I, it's probably intense. And it's also weird to watch a ping pong match knowing that the loser's entire family will be killed, <laughs> wiped out for three generations. You yeah. know, if North Korea loses or whatever. And I said that like tongue Not in cheek, wrong, but though. I found, but I found, I don't, I think like, I don't think that Kim Jong un going to kill them for losing that match. But like, that has happened in the past with the, like in modern times, like in the modern Olympics, yeah. there have been athletes that uh, like, I actually found a thing from the 1976 Montreal games. Yep. The dictator of Haiti, boy, the dictator of heavily. Haiti, uh, baby doc Duvalier. He, <laughs> baby Dodd Duvalier. Baby doc Duvalier. Doc or Dodd? Baby doc. Baby doc. That's a great baby, rap name. Baby doc. Du yeah. It's, it's, it's actually Papa doc's boy. You yeah, know, but uh, yeah, baby, Doc Duvalier, um, <laughs> the guy that they that Haiti sent to run the marathon, he yeah. told him, he said, "If you don't finish this race, I am literally going to kill you. Yeah, like I will kill you if you don't finish this race." And the dude like got injured but stayed in it because he didn't want to die. Of and so he posted the slowest time in Olympic marathon history, but he did finish he did because he was going to get killed if he didn't. So they didn't and, kill him. No. And so okay. that was, you know, that shit was not even 50 years ago, you know, well, at least so, the guy was honest, you know, so I'm saying mean? taking all their, taking yeah. all that gold and stuff that don't yeah. hit either, but no. like, you know, they've been killing sense. them nowadays. Hell. So. Oh, for sure. Uh, also when they won, they didn't get gold. They got wreaths made out of olive tree leaves don't which hit. that don't hit, but also yeah. Olympic gold. That's not solid gold. It's bullshit. Really? No, it's today. Bullshit. Today. 
You it's come on. They can beat that. You can't fucking make a. That ain't, that ain't even that much gold. No, nope. that pisses me off. It I never knew that. Off, that don't hit for me. Pisses what is me it? Off, like bronze or something coated it's in gold? Coated plating? in gold. It's just like, that, yeah, fucking. Bro, it's bullshit. That's bullshit. But <laughs> on that note, though, on that note, though, this is the first Olympics where the athletes are receiving money for winning. Right. Uh, or getting a medal or whatever. And that's never happened before. Like, right. it's it, so they've made exceptions because used to period if you get paid to play a sport you, you can't, can't go to the olympics yeah, very and then famously like, very famously and then of course uh, i don't know when the actual first exception was made but clearly they were going to make it, it for was basketball. 92 wasn't it wasn't it, right? wasn't it the year of the dream team which Probably. was 1992 i'm like, the I, I second think, they let it i think part of the reason the dream team was such a huge deal i think right. is because that was the first year that we were able to do that right and, and you know and they just dominated everybody right i could and be now, wrong but i think it's something like that and now, so it happens in basketball, and now that golf is in the Olympics, it's no longer just amateurs. It's the actual professional golfers or whatever. Um, but Who's with, representing us at the Olympics in oh, golf? Oh, Xander Schauffele, Scotty Scheffler. So Scotty Scheffler's doing um, it? Yeah, Scott, Scotty Scheffler, uh, Xander Schauffele. Oh, I'm forgetting who won the goddamn PGA. Not Bri It's really unfortunate because it's that whole live versus PGA thing. Um, Bryson DeChambeau, who you probably saw him pop up in the news because he just played around with Trump, like for his YouTube series, which is unfortunate because <laughs> Bryson really hits for me. He yeah. used to, he uh, he's had, he'll have that. dude, he's had, well, like it's really weird because, like, he's had such this turnaround, this DeChambeau of science. Because when he came out, everybody hated him. And then he started this YouTube channel because he was like, it, he a lot of people believe he's kind of on the spectrum like a little bit because like a lot of people hated him because he just wasn't good in conversations he kind of didn't make eye contact and he's very robotic about everything he does and he's very technical he's the only golfer out there that like every single one of his clubs is the same length he has them specially made matter of fact he had them uh uh printed he had them huh. 3d printed because he doesn't want his so that'll allow to, you to do that yeah yeah i just always does. assumed that was part of the rules they made the an exception like the club okay no 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 now they they can't be over a certain length okay uh but there's nothing that says that a nine iron and his driver i don't think he you know actually no his driver is different maybe but all his irons like his three iron and his nine iron are the exact same length which is uncommon but he just doesn't want to change his plane. Anyways, he starts this YouTube channel specifically because he's like, I just feel like nobody understands me. And if they got to know me, they would really like me. And he was fucking correct. He's a rad dude. He's really cool. And then last week he had Trump on playing <laughs> to fucking play golf. But anyways, dude, he is one of the best Americans in the fucking game right now. He just won the U.S. Open. And he's not on the team because he's in live and they don't give you right. uh, rank world ranking points. So like, but it's Scheffler's like the dude, right? Scheffler's the dude. And he, we got him. We so. do have him, but I'm just saying you got to still fill out a team. I'm saying that I think Bryson is better than some of the guys on the team. Yeah. Uh, Wyndham Clark or whatever. It's just that he doesn't get the ranking points because he's in live and like, look, fuck live, fuck all that. But this is the Olympics. <laughs> we mm. we got to bring the best. You know what I mean? Uh, right. So any fucking ways. Yeah, so uh, now, yeah, the gold medals aren't gold, but they do at least get paid a little bit. They were held for every four years for 12 centuries, uh, but then uh, in the 4th century, uh, every single pagan festival, which this was, um, they were banned by Emperor Theodosius. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's that was... When, yeah, it's when the Lord took over. Yeah, yeah. That, that, was in, that was the end of all that. Uh, so, however, the, uh, they resurrected them like 1,500 years later, so the first modern Olympics, as we know them, were 1896 in and Athens, in, right? yeah, yeah, in Greece. Yeah, exactly. Which um, checks out, makes sense. What you just said, though, about how the old Olympics ended and it was the Lord that did it. And the reason they did it was because this is pagan uh, multiple God shit. Mm -hmm. Like that now makes me feel like if you're yeah. one of these hardcore American Christians who's pissed about these Olympics this year, you should have you should have never fucked with any Olympics uh, at all. Like you should. Right always hate the olympics regardless right. of where it's held or where it's at because you know that's the christian stance it's a pagan thing of know? course couldn't agree more but as always um yeah they're not consistent <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah right yeah um so here's the thing i learned and i mean dude this make it's one of those things that you just like when you hear it you're like well no shit but you just never stop to think about it but 
the games were basically resurrected with the sole purpose of giving global colonialists a reason to get together and scheme and show off their slaves. Like mm-hmm. that was pretty much, pretty much it. And it, um, yeah, I did not, not know that, but it, nothing has ever checked out more. <laughs> yeah. It, the past it, and the it, way it, it be. It pretty much immediately became just a way to be super insanely capitalist in one big fail fucking swoop, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was up to my notes about the fucking pigeon story. Um, Asia didn't get involved in the Olympics until 1912, and they also took some time off uh, in, from the 50s and 80s. Now, some of that was because of boycotts, but also if you chart it, uh, which I did, uh, it's mainly they were at war most of all those times. Like uh-huh. there was like a huge amount of warring going on and stuff. And uh, they've since, you know, since they've been there, they started in 1912. They missed like 30 years there in the middle and they still have 10% of all the medals of all time, which, you know, that ain't fucking bad. Uh, no, only, they do pretty good. They do. They, yeah, they do pretty good. Especially once they started goddamn ping pong, boy, I'll tell you what. Yes, yeah, so we just can't, we, can't hang. It, it's unbelievable, know. man. God damn, they're so fun to watch. Um, there's only five countries, and again, this is modern. This is the modern Olympics. Only five countries have competed in every Olympic summer games, and that is Greece, Switzerland, Great Britain, Australia, and France. So they have never boycotted shit which switch one we boycott there the, the berlin ones or or something which one which ones no we, we didn't out? no we didn't boycott the berlin ones because jesse, jesse, jesse owens right yeah i'll i'll That's get right. to that in a minute um so then also i had the thing about the artist and the architects jesse um, owens, talking about the past not hitting jesse owens who famously said he was treated better by hitler's germany than he was by his own yep. country after doing that in 1936 it's like it's just such a shame. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm actually I'm actually going to close with that talk with what we're what I'm about to do because it is about Jesse Owens and stuff. But I wanted to say this. This is very interesting to me. Um, we were talking earlier about like how old the croak madame and all that shit is. How old uh-huh. do you think the torch ceremony is? I mean, did they start it up in 1896 when the modern one started? Mm-mm. I don't know. 1936, and it was a Nazi invention. I mean, was, look, dude, here's the uh, yeah. thing. Nazis had stuff, They had bro. some good ideas. They like, had they, swag. They, they had a lot of real bad ones, mostly bad, mm-hmm. but, like, they came up with some, you know, I mean, we wouldn't have made it to the goddamn moon if it wasn't for Nazis. Like, they fucking, you know, we, they, uh, you know, they wasn't wrong about literally everything, I guess, Broke including, clock, I guess, including that having a torch ceremony would hit at the Olympics. Yeah, <laughs> right. Because that, that does it for me. So, yeah, yeah, it was it, it was conceived by German Olympian Carl Diem for the just for the 1936 Summer Olympics in, in Berlin. And the Nazis used the torch relay and the games themselves as propaganda. They had Lenny Riefenschneitzel uh, make a documentary. He was one of the big he was like, I guess he was a, a precursor to Goebbels, Goebbels, Goebbels. Yeah. Um, he ended up becoming like Hitler's main propaganda right. guy. But of course, this is isn't like that, six isn't years. That the the story of the, those Olympics was that Hitler's whole thing with that is like this is going to be yep. our showcase to the world yes. that what the master race well, is. is. Like is we're going to illustrate yes. to the world that we are the master race, and this is how we prove it is by yes. using these Olympics. Yeah. Yes. And then Jesse Owens showed up and and blitzkrieged his ass. <laughs> yes, because like yeah. these were the first ever televised games, so like it was a huge fucking get for Berlin and especially Hitler because like like you said, he saw it. As his opportunity to sort of do what I said with televised the, the or first broadcast, first, first the the first broadcast, I broadcast. guess. Broadcast, okay, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, the first broadcast. Um, so like he's like, you know, I can shape my own narrative about me, about who my country was. I can show all the splendor, all that shit. Um, because like you know, World War Two hadn't started yet, but there right. were a lot of people who were already pretty keen to the fact that like mm, I don't think Hitler hits. You know Correct. what I mean? Maybe yes. he don't hit. Yeah. Um, and then Henry Ford and then was like, no, he does hit. He does and hit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Good guy. <laughs> hey, hits yeah. real hard, actually. Uh, Hitler, uh, like I said, he was, he was very aware of this. Uh, so in a, in, in a move that was kind of like, how can I be racist if I did this? Uh, he let like a couple Jewish athletes on the team, which like, you know, didn't hit for him, but it was like mm-hmm. a move of propaganda or whatever. Uh, and you know, as the Jesse Owens story goes, like, I don't have to do the whole thing. Uh, but Jesse Owens, a black American, came in and whooped all Hitler's fellers' asses. 
Um, man, here's the thing. Uh, I would love to explain it, but I can't explain it any funnier than Bill Burr did in one of my favorite bits, and I've clipped it out. Let's let's hear Bill Burr talk about Hitler Please. and Jesse Owens. Please. No, that's my, my favorite my favorite sports clip is that Jesse Owens shit. I just love it because their whole angle was fucked up. He made Hitler leave in like the third quarter, right? He's putting down his number one finger, just fucking walking out of the stadium. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> their whole thing was like, we are going to create a superior race. It's like, dude, I think we accidentally already did that. <laughs> now we send a select group of people to the gym every day for a couple hundred years. It's paying dividends. They're fucking dunking on us every day. <laughs> Dude, how quiet was that limo ride home with Hitler? You know what I'm saying? You know he was talking crazy shit when they were on the way there. They were all amped up. They are going to dominate Sieg Heil. Just going off. That whole ride home, they're just sitting there all quiet. You're sitting next to an even angrier than usual Adolf Hitler. Trying to make some sort of small talk. Like, hey, it is one nice day, isn't it? You know, nice boot. <laughs> so goddamn funny dude uh yeah. but no actually you know those what's what's really interesting about that is that there have been like five like officially boycotted olympics and that the one in berlin was not officially boycotted by anybody like there were people individual people who were like fuck that i'm not going to participate but like as a country no one boycotted it the here's the here is a list of the time that the Olympics were officially boycotted. By us, uh, by us, you mean? No, 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 by, by, by no, 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 by other people. Like just boycotted okay. in general. 1956, Australia hosted Egypt, Iraq, Lebanon, Netherlands, Cambodia, Spain, Switzerland, and the People's Republic of China boycotted. Uh, 1964. For, for what? What did Australia do? Dude, I had no fucking idea. I didn't, I didn't know far Australia had ever pissed anybody off that much other than the emus that time. You know? <laughs> Me, I, like, there's a couple of them. In there, dude, there's one in here that you're going to, it's going to blow your mind even more because they, to me, they're double that. And anyways, uh, 1964, Japan hosted and North Korea, in, Indonesia, People's Republic of China boycotted. That all yeah, makes sense. That like, makes that, total sense. Japan that pissed sense. a lot of people off yeah. <laughs> over yeah. there and, and elsewhere for a long time. But like, so bro, that, we that, went. That <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yeah, like, we, you know. I yeah, mean, we, we kind of had to show our ass. respect. Yeah, right. Yeah, we, you know. It'd be hard to show my goddamn face over there after yeah. that. <laughs> Uh, anyways, no, here's the one that's going to fucking, I'm like, I mean, it's like, I should have looked up why, but I kind of like mystery sometimes. Um, Canada hosted Algeria, Benin, the social socialist Republic of the union of Burma, Cameroon, central African Republic, Chad, PR Congo, Egypt, Ethiopia, Ga uh, Gabon, Gambia, Ghana, Guyana, Iraq, Kenya, Libya, Lesotho, Madagascar, Malawi, Mali, Morocco, Niger, Nigeria. Uh -huh. Good job. Yep. Uh, Republic of China, uh, Somalia, Sri Lanka, Sudan, Swaziland, Taz Tanzania, Toga, Tunisia, Uganda, Upper Volta. Some of these I've never heard of. And Zambia boycotted Canada. In what year? Uh, that was. Excuse me, I got to. Because I have up. a guess. 1976. One. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, it's the same guess for Australia. My assumption for that is that. That was an anti-British empire thing, an anti-British colonialism, yep. imperialism thing, and they were like, They're part "Canada is just one of your, one of your whatever vassal states out. or whatever." And now I'm kind of thinking that was the same thing for Australia in 1956, but obviously I have no idea. That's just my guess. And, Canada, uh, what, dude, in what other way has Canada ever pissed anyone off? Right, yeah, right. They famously They're the most polite country in the world ever. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, yeah. So this one, I don't. It's so all the names I just mentioned for the first one, they're all definitely on this list uh, and even more 1980 uh, Soviet Union host yeah. and pretty much everyone except us because uh, that was the hockey year, wasn't it? Yes, but here's the thing, though. So Mark said last night that we boycotted that one and I didn't want to like I didn't want to derail us by bringing it up. But like, was that a year where both Olympics took place in the same year or something? Meaning like the winter games. took. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. I, I asked because. You're only talking. Are you only talking about this? You're not just talking about the Summer Olympics. I just, I just Mark I also said we boycotted them, but is that not the Miracle on Ice year, 1980? I, I thought like, so. 
Right. Here's my here's I my favorite so part too. though. According to the Wikipedia, they list basically every country that has ever existed, but for Albania in parentheses it says no reason given. <laughs> like everybody else, it was like they boycotted him and told him why. And I guess Albania was like, I'm with you fellers. <laughs> you know so I mean? it says the U.S. led a boycott of the 1980 Summer Olympics in Moscow to protest the Soviet Union's whole deal. And they were invading Afghanistan. It's funny. We were like standing up for Afghanistan at the time. Right. But uh, hold, I, I, when did the miracle on ice happen? I was already thinking about this because Mark brought it up last night. Hey, Siri. So it that it's is what happened. That's what happened. happened. It was it was February of night. So that is what happened in 1980. Yeah, it aligned where I guess both Olympics happened that year, but in in different part. And in the winter time in 1980, I guess we didn't boycott yeah, it, them, and we got, won at Lake Placid. We beat them in the Miracle on Ice. But then in the Summer Olympics later that year, we said no, we ain't going. Yeah, they got. Way. I guess they were in the same year because they the times had gotten screwed up because of the when they didn't happen because of the war or something like that right um 1984 it was hosted right here in right where you are in los angeles and the soviet union bulgaria east germany mongolia czechoslovakia afghanistan cuba south yemen north korea ethiopia angola and, and again albania no reason given <laughs> they just the rest of those, sure, whatever, we've pissed a lot of people off. But you said Afghanistan, right? Yeah. I thought, I just brought it up. I thought in the 80s, they I thought us in Afghanistan were hidden for each other because yeah. they were at war with Russia and we were helping them fight that war. I thought they were our boys back then. I mean, that's part of what's always been funny about the, well, <laughs> I don't know if funny is the right word, about the whole Afghanistan thing. Yeah. Is that like, we like trained, armed, funded them and everything for years and years because they were against Russia. And then, you know, years later, a lot of those dudes was like, yeah, we're going to kill you now. But, uh, you know, Man. you'll have that. We contain multitudes. Uh, last one, and then I want to ask you a question. Uh, 1988, South Korea hosted, and Ethiopia just didn't respond to the invitation. Nicaragua had financial difficulties. No shit. Madagascar also had financial difficulties. Cuba boycotted. Albania, this time, just didn't respond to the invitation. North Korea, Seychelles, did not respond to the Im invitation. Yeah. Now, now, Trey... Um, Here's the deal. Oh, by the way, USA, USA, the United States is the only country to have earned a medal at every Olympic Winter Games. Also, did you know that English and French are the official languages of the Olympics, as well as whoever is hosting? So this year, it's just English and French. Those are the official languages. How did France get in on it I don't and know. not like Greek? I, if you said English and Greek, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I get that. But yeah. I don't want to get what France. I, I mean, honestly, it's probably just because those two countries were the most colonially countries. So right. they spread their language. Well, they've hosted far three, and wide. They've hosted three times. I can't remember how many countries it is that have, there's a, there's a select. Well, LA's hosting the next one. Yeah. Uh, so, so they'll so get it. And I'm like, already like, Paris, both looking London. forward to, but also dreading that because oh, like, just living out here, me, the, 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 uh, traffic and all that shit's not going to hit, but I like the Olympics. So I'm going to like go and take the boys to some of, of these events and stuff. And I'm looking forward to that. But, uh, but yeah, logistically, it ain't going to hit. So what's your question? Uh, I'm I'm insanely torn on boycotting the Olympics, and here's why. Okay. Because, like, from a country's perspective, yeah. I get it diplomatically or whatever, but from the player's perspective, it's, it is, cool. it, it's in my opinion, literally cruel and unusual punishment. I agree completely. It's, it's so funny you say, even if you had not asked this question, I was going to bring this up anyway, because Mark brought this up on SKUs last night about how, like, especially during all the years and in all the sports where it's limited who can be in it, meaning right. like if you, when, when you had to be an amateur and it's like, what well, that, what is that? 18 to 22 and right. a lot of play, or whatever. And it's like, I was 20 the year these Olympics happened, but my country boycotted them, so I missed out, and now I'm just fucked forever. forever. Like, and I trained since I was five. Yeah, it's not. Well, it's like we've talked about before with, like, you know, going back to politics a little bit, we've had fans over the years and stuff who've sent us messages being like, you really think you should be doing a show in Georgia right now, considering right. what their state is doing, whatever, that type of thing. And we've always been like, yeah, because... Yeah, of course. Fuck what the state might be doing at any given time, but there's people there... The people that, that run the go theater, to comedy, I don't want to punish those. Those people have nothing to do with it. I don't want to punish them. And it's like, and the, yeah, when it comes to the athlete's perspective, I don't, I mean, I don't think it hit. I mean, I, I don't know. Like you said, on a macro scale from the country, I get how you make a statement or whatever, but 
that has not it's not the it's not the athlete's fault that it happens to take place that year in a country that don't hit and now they're fucked over forever because of it right and that and that don't hit for me I so I, I don't i don't think you should do it i don't i might feel that. differently if they got to compete every year in the olympics but they right. don't and right. also not only is it a like age that some of them have a very small physical window Right, like, a like very, most like, gymnasts outside. Gy- of most Simone gymnasts Biles. have this, like, right. I'm going to be in these Olympics, and like, if you just fail to get a tryout for them, you're fucked because, like, you'll just be too old. Your bones don't work. You know right. what I mean? Um, but like, yeah, yeah no, and, I'm and with you. By the way, with that cool. whole "Don't do a show in Georgia," how far you want to take that shit? Because if you look at just what the United States does on a daily basis, should we do a show anywhere here? So you sure. just want to blame our fucking region, even though the United States government be doing some fuck shit? But no, it's fine because you live north of the Mason Dixon. Suck my fucking dick. We got yeah. airmail. I hold on. Wait, I I know this this episode would be a little bit longer that's than fine I'll, I'll, been. I'll just go because, all night. just because i've been dying to talk to you about this oh, cool. i want to i want to say to people though if you're listening if you're old old school skewniverse you want to do airmail first and then you, do this then yeah yeah yes that's a good idea we'll, yeah. we'll switch it up this one time we'll do airmail first and then i've got so, one more topic of conversation yeah. that y'all can bounce out on if you right. want to so, so you get the airmail. full episode like yes. nothing happens so i don't want to hear anybody bitching that you yeah. I don't like that bullshit right. talk do you stop after airmail if it that's don't a, have for you that's a good call yeah there you go okay we've got b rye and I know it's going to sound like I'm doing this for one reason, and I am, but there's also another reason. Um, <laughs> subject line, flowers for Forrester for weekly skews. You can oh, say my read if you need this, uh, read this live. From b Rye or Brian from Ohio, I mean no disrespect to Trey, who I always, who and I do mean always, brings the comedic perspective and witty barbs to weekly skews, but I just listened to the most recent skews, which saw CRF me, Fill in and let me just say, our boy Corey was on fire. I don't know if it was the confessed sobriety or just the passion of the times, but this was top form, Joe. While I always, and again, I do mean always, enjoy Mark's political breakdown and Trey's comedic witticisms, this was an absolutely stellar guest hosting. This was not just Corey asking questions about some shit he doesn't know, as he has comedically done in the past. Yes, it was for comedy effort. Uh, but we were graced with the presence of POO, POA's very own Professor Cho dropping some POA-type historical context about political violence into this modern discussion, along with his own comedic interpretations of Americans' current political chaos. Uh, anyways, yada yada. Uh, they talk about how much great you are, how funny you are, how smart Mark is, and uh, basically they and wanted— how hard you hit. Yeah, how hard he hit, but the bottom here, and I'm going to read all of it because naturally with our fans, it's 19 more paragraphs. Yeah, yeah. But the point was, b Rye wanted to hook you up with a very nice review for Weekly Skews to tell people that listen to POA that might not listen to Weekly Skews that it super hits, and especially when I guest host. So Yeah, right, yes. I know that was just a minor, minor part of it for you. You would have read that either way. But yeah, uh, no, I, I definitely, I feel very confident that I know exactly who that is. And I love B. Rye in part because Me too. He's, a, he's a patron and he is one of the few people I have that like, I do Q and A's and stuff on there mm-hmm. and he makes sure that I have an opportunity to talk about football. B. Rye, uh, B. Yeah. Rye well, he, he brings up football stuff I uh, love that. on there. And so I very much appreciate him. But yeah, so. All right. Subject line, Dale Dolly Titties. Dale Dolly Titties. All right. Now that I have your attention, I'm from Stokes County. Fucking Mayberry is in goddamn Mount Airy, North Carolina. Pilot Mountain doesn't deserve the airspace you gave them bastards. I lost a girlfriend and a lawnmower to that trash fucking town. It wasn't a lawnmower. Di- <laughs> a girlfriend it, and a lawnmower. Yeah. Lost that a girlfriend. A and, I lost a girlfriend and a lawnmower to that trash fucking town. I it like was, to imagine she rode away from him on, on his lawnmower. lawnmower. She yeah. took his lawnmower and fucking packed her shit and left on the lawnmower, never to see either of them again. That's how I like to picture that. He continues. It wasn't a deer and she wasn't a 10, but goddamn that shit still hurt. <laughs> <laughs> This is fire. This is an absolute fire. Also, Pilot Mountain looks like a titty. Look that shit up. Love y'all. This is remember when I texted you earlier and I said I just laughed out loud by myself yeah. from an airmail. It was that, oh, that one. That's phenomenal. It was <laughs> that's poetry, dude. It was it was Allie, right? Who who Allie Clayton, yeah. 
she was the one who gave Pilot Mountain the shine that I guess it doesn't I she, deserve. And I've always heard Mount Airy too, but I was like, I bet Allie I just knows more trusted than me. her because she's me from too. North Carolina. Yeah, I didn't question it, but all right, well, I'll have to tell her she got called out. Uh, yeah, I just Googled Pilot Mountain and it does kind of look like a titty. All right. Anyways, dude, it wasn't a deer and she ain't a 10. Great. If, if we but got shit still hurt, that's a great line. I, dude, if we got any like, country musicians that listen to this i want to hear that in a fucking song if we're right there and now. she wasn't a 10 but you, yeah that's yeah you, i mean you got to give b right at least 10 percent of that fucking song just for that one line but god Hold damn, on, was that also b right or was that not a different person oh wait no yeah you're right that okay. was a different person right. they didn't say if i could use their name though that's fine well yeah, I, don't, hey yeah. email me back if it's okay if i use your name because frankly i do want you to have credit for the fucking poetry that you just slammed us with um subject line thoughts on claims of heritage this is going to be a short one but i'm currently listening to your episode of putting on airs with ali clayton and when the subject of claiming to be part of cherokee came up i immediately thought of something i heard a while back about how in southern families it wasn't uncommon for people to claim that they were part native american because they were actually part african american and the former was more acceptable in society and less likely to result in discrimination i can't remember where i heard that huh. nor many more details for the sake of nuance and maybe y'all already know that i didn't no, but just I, figured i'd write something real quick about it and it makes a lot of sense honestly hell trey revealing he was one percent nigerian kind of proves the point i seriously <laughs> wonder how many racist dipshits are part african in some way and don't even know it if it turns out uh Cor your Corey's grandma was so dark because she had some african in her ancestry i'd love to find out uh how your dad <laughs> handles the news <laughs> ah, it hit uh, for him uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that I've never heard that either. But that like, that makes a lot of sense, really. That 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 because yes, it's a stereotype Babe in the Ruth. south, stereotype in the south that a lot of white people claim, as we said on the episode with Ali, claim Native American heritage. But I never heard that. But the idea that the way that started was right. that they were a little darker complexion, and they just had to, and they actually had some black in them and they had to be like, no, it's native American instead. Cause that was more acceptable. Like, I mean, the way the South be, I totally a hundred percent, uh, like I, I believe that. For yeah, sure. no, it, it makes a lot of sense. You know, like they, like, you know, a lot of people are now like doing some, is it always negative when you say revisionist history? Cause I don't mean this I mean, in a I negative guess, way. I mean, maybe no. I mean, I guess if you're, I don't know. I mean, I've mostly heard revisionist history said in a negative way, but I guess like, well, I don't mean this. Depending I don't on mean context. this in an, in a negative way at all. But there's a lot of people suggesting lately that Babe Ruth was part African American, and uh, there was well, a I mean, lot of, he hit real hard, so, right? Yeah. And there's a but there. This was coming from black historians and stuff, and they just started like breaking down all this stuff and showing pictures of him, and and it was just like, fuck, man, you know, maybe this made me. That first of all, I could totally see that, except like I've always felt like every like I've my whole life, even as a kid, knowing he's the greatest baseball player of all time, seeing videos and pictures of him and stuff, I've always been like, that is the most meatball ass motherfucker. Like he's a sentient hot dog, you know right. what I mean? And he so uh or what you eat. That's the only thing that makes me feel otherwise about that. But I mean, I mean again, he hit real hard, so he probably was part black. This made me think of this. This is only like two minutes long. I hope this is the right clip. Uh, are you saying this? Yep. Okay. Dave Chappelle's skit where Chappelle plays the blind KKK leader. You know, you know, at the end of the skit, he finds out that he was actually black. Well, that kind of happened in real life, except the white supremacist we're talking about, he's not even blind. Check this out. Craig Cobb. Mm -hmm. Craig Paul Cobb has undergone DNA testing to determine genetic ancestry. 86% European. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Give it to him. Give it to him. Fourteen percent sub-Saharan African. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey. Hold on. Just wait a minute. So. This is called statistical noise. Sweetheart, you have a little black in you. Yes. Yeah, right? Listen, I'll tell you this: oil and water don't mix. So, oh my God. hey, bro. <laughs> So the it's so funny how the one main thing that hits another me, man's treasure because I would be so happy. Pumped. Well, dude, I so I mean pumped. I talked about it on here like when I like when my results came in and Katie's sitting there with me 
and I was reading through them and I got the, it just one, not 14%. It's 1% Nigeria. And I was yeah. like, Oh, yeah. I was like, Katie, look at the fucking, and I was so excited. And, but she ruined it immediately. Of course, by being like, she's like, right. Yeah. So you know how that almost had to have happened. Right. And I was like, yes, mm -hmm. God damn it. Of course I know mm -hmm. you fucking made it not hit. Thank you for that. But anyway, yeah. she's going to hear this presumably, but that clip hits for me primarily as I'm sure it does for most people for that, that black lady oh, God. who just understands she catches on to what's about to happen. Yeah. And she just starts fucking cackling and it, Cracks me the fuck up. Yeah, it's great. Well, fun show today. Fun, dude. Fucking fun airmail. I'll tell Here, you what. It was fun airmail. Let's uh, let's do our plugs, and then and then yep. I want to talk to you, and people can stick around if they want to. So y'all come see me in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, tonight and tomorrow night. If you're listening to this when it comes out, and then Dallas, Texas, next weekend. If y'all are in Dallas, I'm going to be filming these shows. They're important to me, so please come out and also don't get too drunk and be cool, but laugh a lot. But either way, it's going to be a good weekend. Donnie Singstack will be there. I got a ton of other shows coming up in the near future. Go to TreyCrowder.com and come see me. Listen to all the other shows in this universe. Well read, uh, Weekly Skews and Gravy Baby. And also join me on Hero Hero. It's like Patreon, but European. I'm one of the first Americans on there. You can find that at WeLoveCorey.com. All my bonus stuff. If I make you happy, uh, support the arts. Pay a little money right. for it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, stay fancy, motherfuckers. Okay. Now we've done that. Y'all can hang up if you don't want to listen to this next part. I just want to talk to Corey about this. This is about to be a nerd conversation Can't wait. about the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. So if you're not at all into that, bye. Thank you for coming this week. We appreciate it. If you want to hear this, stick around. We'll call it bonus content. We used to do this on Well Read with Game of Thrones recaps. but uh, So it's a similar type of thing. Cho, so big news in the MCU this week. Big news in Marvel World. It got announced at Comic-Con that... Robert Downey Jr. is coming back to uh, portray famed Marvel villain Doctor Doom in uh, in 2026 in an Avengers movie coming in 2026 where he's going to be the big bad like the Thanos level villain or whatever. I feel like the Marvel world in the fandom was pretty divided on this. So <laughs> right down me, the middle, dude. Right down the middle. So I'm gonna tell you how I feel about it first, and you tell me what you think because you. Like, I mean, I've read some of the comics and I read them when I was a kid, but you'd be like reading comics and shit. You're definitely more up on it and into it than I am. But like, make this very clear. I have, I loved everything about the MCU up till Endgame. Loved it. Loved it. I thought it was one of the most incredible cinematic achievements of all time. They pulled something off that no one Maybe else top. had ever done. Right. And it was highly impressive. And I loved it. I was there every step of the way and I loved it. Robert Downey Jr. was the cornerstone of all of that. He's the one who started, started it. it. He's the one that carried it on his back throughout the whole thing as Tony Stark and his Iron Man. One of the best performances of all time. Could not have been cast better in a million years. Love Robert Downey Jr. Loved MCU. Love one of my Iron favorite Man. actors of all time. Having said all that, this decision did not land for me, sit right sit right with me or hit for me at all. Because immediately to me, here's some of the things I thought about it. I was like, when I first heard that, I was like, dude, what? Ha why? I mean, I felt so many things. Part of it was like, this reeks of desperation to me. It's yes. no secret that since Endgame, the MCU has been on a massive downward trend. They're floundering. They're, they're losing people like a lot. They're hemorrhaging followers and fans and stuff. They're falling off, which by the way, Everything has to fall acceptable. off eventually. It's acceptable. Like to me, I'd almost rather them just like ride off into the sunset. But yeah, I but, get it. It's worth billions of dollars. Right. I was about to but say they're, they're, their company is worth more than the right. globe, the GDP of a lot like of countries. Seventy percent of US or of, yeah. uh, of global countries or something. Yes. Right. So I get. I get that they're not going to do that. They've but got subsidiaries but, that are worth more but, than some of them countries. They're struggling. It hasn't been going well. And to me, this reeks of a desperate move. Of like, it feels very classically Hollywood. Of like. We got to do something. Here's the thing that we know works. We know right. these idiots love this. Nostalgia. We know they love this thing. So let's just do this again. And that will hit for them. It feels like that to me, which don't hit for me. But also like, I feel like it just, I don't know how they're going to go about it yet. And I don't think it's been confirmed. Maybe you could tell me, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think they've hundred percent confirmed the context of this. Right. Happening, meaning like, is he going to be a Tony Stark variant from the multiverse right. in a multiverse where Tony Stark becomes Dr. Doom? Is he going to be Victor Von Doom? But 
So he just isn't Tony Stark at all. And it's just played and voiced by the same guy. No one knows the answer to any of those questions yet. But I feel like no matter what, because he is the most iconic part of the MCU by far, I feel like no matter how they address it, it's just going to feel kind of fucking weird and not yes. just weird, but also weird in a way that cheapens yes. the arc and ultimate end of Tony and Iron Man's story. Like the way they landed that plane. Unreal. Was perfect. Was perfect. And I feel like doing this, like, I feel like it cheapens that and kind of fucks that up a little bit. It, it, it don't have the same weight or impact or stakes or anything that it had before by doing this almost no matter how they, how they go about doing it. So I love the MCU. I love Robert Downey Jr. I, I also, ever since I was a kid, Dr. Doom, I love Dr. Doom, the character. He's a hit and ass villain. I love everything involved, but this don't hit for me. And I want to know what you think about it. Dude, I myself am in internally split down the middle, like internally split down the middle because when the news first came out, my immediate reaction was just like, fuck yes. Just because I love Robert Downey Jr. And I love Dr. Doom. And like, it was like, I've got dude. And here's the thing, like you were talking about earlier about how like they've been faltering. Absolutely. A lot of that has to do with some piss poor storylines and some, you know, grabbing at straws or whatever. But a lot of it is genuinely just comic book fatigue. Right. Yes. Like people have comic book fatigue because there's been some stuff during this whole thing that has, actually has also hit, hit. Yeah, has right. also hit. But it's but it's like it's coming at this time. Yes. Like it's no surprise that a show like The Boys and Deadpool and Wolverine are so popular right now because mm -hmm. they are like perfect tonics They're, for superhero yeah. fatigue because they are the antithesis. Exactly. Right. Yeah. They are like they they kind of tongue in cheek make fun of that bullshit. Exactly. And dude. For me personally, The Boys has elevated itself to like a top three favorite Ever. thing of mine Ever. all time. It's me one of all time favorite. And I think a big part of the reason why is exactly what you're saying. It's because it's, it hits that spot and scratches that it. It's counter programming to yeah, the superhero fatigue and everything. And I just, I couldn't I would, love what they're doing more. Me so. either. And I would throw Invincible in there as well. Um, yeah. I Invincible. just, well, I just finished the first season of that last not, night. It's also hitting. It's, for me. it's great. Not but quite not to the level of The Boys. Cause as right. you said, like to me, The Boys, like, you know, seasons one, I immediately loved it. Like I immediately right. was like, this is, com this is built exactly for me. Nothing could be more my shit. Um, but like the, the arc of the whole four seasons, I'm like, this is genuinely a borderline Sopranos level fucking master. Right. Yes. Like this is really good. Completely. Like it's no longer Love just it. the show where, yeah, some guy shrinks himself down and goes in a dick hole, sneezes and smashes a dude in half. It is that. But it is that It too. is that. That's part yeah. of what makes it so great is like they, it is that, Right. It's one of the wildest goddamn things that's ever been committed to celluloid. It's insane, but it's also smart and works in and every, the it's, acting. It's like everything about it, everything about it just works. So it's like one of the craziest things, but it's not just a shock. It is a shock value show, but it's legitimately incredible, even yeah. aside from that. And it's like, there just ain't many other things out there that have ever pulled that off as let far me, as I'm concerned. Let me say something to you, and I mean it. Walter White, Tony Soprano, Homelander, mm -hmm. Omar. Like, Dude. I'm not saying which is which. I'm just telling you they're in the conversation. Bro, He's in the fucking star. Anthony Starr is un in unbelievable. unbelievable. One of the and best you know, performances of all time. 100%. I heard him. He was on fucking uh, Jimmy Fallon or something talking about when he got the audition for the boys. Like, he just, uh, he kind of poo pooed it or whatever. And he was like, what the fuck is this shit? You know, which I kind of understand, you know, somebody reading that. And he just, like kind of didn't give a shit if he got it just went he was working on another project just went into his trailer and just fucking snapped it on and did the self-tape just to get it over with and they were like yep so like with that context like how hard he immediately crushes mm -hmm. is like i mean it's unbelievable but anyways like i was saying um going back to robert downey jr and victor von doom i don't know the context and i don't know which one it's gonna happen regardless so i'm trying to now figure out which one i prefer and I guess my initial thought of why I was kind of pumped was like, okay, look, if the MCU is not hitting for me anyways, well, then what, it, right. what does it matter to me what take they do? Swing. So, like, take yeah. a fucking swing. Right. And, like, you know, there was a lot of people that were like, Tom Brady shouldn't come back. He's fucking, you know, he's going to ruin his legacy or whatever. He won the fucking Super Bowl. It, it was with a different team. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. like, I'm never going to bet against Robert Downey Jr., he hits for me. It will put my butt in the seat 
to either see if they pull it off or if they don't. Now, it is going to matter to me probably a lot whether or not he is a variant or whether he's just straight up playing Dr. Doom. Now, if he's straight up playing Dr. Doom, he's got to keep the mask on the whole fucking time. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can't see Robert Downey right. Jr. because I, I'm going to think of fucking Tony I Clark. agree with that completely. Here's my, here's my problem with that. I agree with you completely, but putting all you that know. aside, I would prefer that he be Victor Von Doom. Like, I, I, I don't want him to be a... Ve- like, I don't either. Putting aside the fact that it's but Robert Downey Jr. But that's what they're going to do. I know, but, but that don't hit from... Like, I Victor agree. Von Doom, the character, is its own great character. And I know there are comic runs yeah. where there's a Tony Stark variant. That be, I know that that's a thing. But the, like, OG character of Victor Von Doom and Doctor Doom, like, that hits, that deserves to be done. But, but if they do that with Robert Downey Jr. playing him, like you just said, I just can't see how that's going to work out. So it almost feels like they have to make him a variant, but I don't want him to be a variant. So no. it's like... Well, I'm dude, not, I, I don't know, I'm just not, There's they could pull it, they could r- rope me back in and it could end up hitting, but like. There's a reason the original films were really successful, is because they took everything that was great about the comics, but they left out the stuff that wasn't transferable to film. They left all the stuff out that was like, okay, that's like in the medium of comic books, that is good, but on screen, that is not good. There's a huge theory from a lot of people that are like, that's the reason that a Fantastic Four movie has never worked is because they're the most comic booky of all of them. Well, Mr. And Fantastic they, in particular, it's almost it's just like and fucking, it's cool. It's cool in theory. It's cool in a video game or a comic book, but seeing that in live action on screen, it's, it's ridiculous. Stretchy man, it just yeah. kind of don't play. And the thing know? too, like he, you know, like right. I know they rock feller. Yeah. yeah, like obviously, you know, Drax exists, but that's a little bit different. He's not made out of rocks. He's still a humanoid, you know, or whatever the fuck. But see, but my like, counter argument to that though, I've heard that argument and I get where they're coming from and I do agree with the central premise of like, oh, that's hard to adapt to film, but like I mean, James Gunn took The Guardians of the Galaxy, right, which are like pretty inherently insane. In That's a lot true. of ways, That's and true. made them like some of the most beloved characters in the MCU. So it's like I just think the Fantastic the Four movies proves the rule, though. But the fa- but well, also he's just great. He, That's like, what I'm saying. I, I just think that the Fantastic Four movies have just they just have not been done particularly well. No, like, they have. I, no, I still think they're if they've been, got a James Gunn level talent on a Fantastic Four movie that it could hit. And like, look, we're getting one. It's not from James Gunn, but we're getting one. And right. who fucking knows? I have no idea. But the problem is, though, is that this Fantastic Four movie is in the current iteration of the MCU. And you said that you called this shit a long fucking time ago. Um, now that they've opened the multiverse, you can't put the rabbit back in that hat. You right. can't do it. Right? right. Which is why I know for a goddamn fact that. Victor Von Doom will be a variant of fucking Tony Stark because they're going to want his face there, right? Now, to my arg- to the argument of this cheapens the Tony Stark thing. Now, I've always been really good at like going, okay, I remember when Dumb and Dumber 2 came out. Uh, not the the one with Jim Carrey and, yeah, and yeah. Harry. Yeah, yeah. And everybody was like, dude, don't do this. You're going to ruin the first movie. I've always been of the mind of like, no, you can't. The, the first movie already exists, like, you can't that that's impossible to do or when they reboot a movie why fuck with it why fuck with a classic now if you want to go i would rather that studio use that money to make something original okay whatever but as far as like it can't ruin just like the fuck like continue to like the first one so in this instance it's not gonna be that tony stark so i believe i can separate it but i still hear you but here's the deal though it's only gonna cheapen it realistically to people who will be watching the whole thing from start to finish new, because me and you were never going to get the moment back from end game. Like we right. had that moment once right. we're never going to get that back. So what the fuck does it really matter? We got it. Like we had mm-hmm. it in theaters. We got it. So at this point, it's like, it's not like if we go watch end game right now downstairs, we're going to feel differently about it. If we watch it in six months after Tony Stark's, Dr. Von, I don't think we're going to feel differently. You know what I mean? I think we're going to be like this movie. I don't hit. know if I think that. I think but you ain't even going to watch it if, again. You don't I rewatch think it. I just rewatched it with my sons like last month. And oh, I that checks out. So, uh, but I don't know. I, I think if we're talking, it's three years from now and Tony Stark is now back in whatever form. RDJ is some version of Tony Stark is now back in existence in the active MCU in 2029 or whatnot. 
I kind of do think if you're re-watching the old ones and you get the end game, I don't I don't think it will have the we had the moment when it came out, you're right, nothing will ever change that. That's true. But upon a rewatch in the future, I do think there are ways to to cheapen it. Like if you know, yeah. if you know when you're watching it again that in the in the present day, a version of him is back. And but a version of him, not him. Thing. He's yeah, still the I hero. Don't I don't well, know. dude, but that, but but dude, I mean, you know, the thing is like Everything's about to be cheapened by that logic because they, dude, they about to do it with all of them. Like, and, well, all it's of, like you said. I mean, you said a minute ago that I called it like when it all, I, I talked about, I think on Well Read or whatever, when it first happened on one of these podcasts, I was saying it's like, I don't know about this. And the yeah. reason I don't know about this is because of exactly what we're talking about. It's like it opens up yeah. every creative door and I get that, but not everything is good about that. And no, this I part agree. Of the, it lowers the stakes of everything forever automatically. Yep. Like nothing has there the is same no import. Stakes. Right, exactly. And that's yeah. just, that just ain't good, I don't think. No, I, I couldn't agree more. But again, though, like there, I, and maybe this is like the contrarian in me, but there's part of me that's like, I, I don't know. I, I think it's because I watch too many fucking movies and too many like comeback stories and shit to where I just start believing shit. You know what I mean? Like there's part of me that is like, Tiger Woods is absolutely going to break Jack Nicholas's record, even mm-hmm. though he can barely walk. Mm-hmm. If Tom Brady came back, he's he's going to come back. He's going to go to the Raiders, and he's going to win a Super. There's part of me that inherently believes all that shit because I've seen Miracle on Ice. I've seen, you know what I mean? Right. And like, I think there's a lot of that going on right now. Where like, I see all the people talking shit, and it, which is we've done now, and I think it's all credible. But I see all that, and I go, these. I'm going to see these quotes five years from now put up on a look at what everybody was saying, right. and look at look at what happened. Yeah. I don't know though because Maybe. again, I, I mean, I fucking hope. I, that's just I hope because I yeah, want it to hit for me again. If it would, yes. If they do actually pull it, that would hit for me too because I'd like to see it hit again. You yeah, know? me too. But like, so, but like, I don't know, man. Like, I agree with you in the sense of where it's like it's a fucking hail mary, and mm-hmm. like it, it's weird to me. On don't don't. I mean, look. Obviously, the amount of money that they just gave to Robert Downey Jr. surpasses any other offer that he was currently getting. However, this is one reason I I feel like he's been pitched the idea. They didn't just say, "Do you want to play Doctor Von Doom?" And he said yes. They pitched him some type of idea right. that he was he like, signed off "I on. like that." And he just right. won a fucking Oscar, right. so it's not like Robert Downey Jr. is like, "I'll take fucking anything I can get." Again, again, I'm aware that this is a huge paycheck, but like, dog, he's still getting paid from his first run as fucking Tony. Mm-hmm. Like, there's only so much money you can fucking have. And I know Robert Downey Jr. is a, I like doing things for the art of it. Like, he, that's why Tony Stark was so good because you didn't have somebody that just wanted to play action heroes playing him. You had a fucking dude who wanted to be a thespian playing Tony Stark. So, like, that's part that gives me a little hope is like, I know they came to him with an idea. Maybe they came to him with the idea and he was like, fuck that. And then they came back to him with something else and he was like, now that I can get behind. You know, so like, because yeah. you know that that had to have happened. Right. So I don't know, dude, but it's, I'll tell you what, it's going to put butts in the seats. That, that's for, for the, definitely for, for the first, for the, first, the movie, right. will, the movie will open well, as right. they say in Hollywood. It will open well, regardless yeah. of how good it does Much i don't legs know it has yeah. it'll have a it'll have a fucking phenomenal opening weekend and then it could have a 50 percent decline in the second week which this is all like inside bullshit talk mm-hmm. but like it'll open great <laughs> yeah I mean, I mean no like i mean yeah every everything i've said aside like i mean i'm gonna be there i'm gonna be yeah. there with my sons looking, but you know what, sucks? what it's about you know? you know what sucks trey what before we watch that when we gonna have to watch all this other bullshit <laughs> <laughs> that we've been skipping. Yeah. <laughs> right. God damn it. Yeah. God I mean, damn that's it. part of their plan too. I get, but that, see that really, well, all right, we can no, we'll dude, I'm wrap here. it up soon, but that's the, that really is their bigger problem. But again, I get it. I, I don't know how I would have done it either. Like it's, it's the whole, it's like following up Michael Jordan or follow up. Like they crushed the first primary, you know, story arc of the MCU across all those years and all those movies, they crushed it so hard that like now we're on the wizard. It would have been almost impossible to successfully follow that up. And they, so, I mean, I get it. I do get it, but, but I mean, they didn't like they, if, if they had, and to what I was saying earlier, I feel like if they had have been able to, if they had kept hitting and that they'd gotten into a whole new, and part of that wasn't their fault, Jonathan majors, that whole thing. Yeah. And Kate, we even thought he was going to rule. Except even putting aside his 
uh, off screen bullshit before any of that happened, the way they handled him in universe didn't hit for you most know, people, including me. By ants. So like, right. So they like fucked a lot of things up. And if they hadn't of, I don't think they'd have any of these problems, but furthermore, I don't think that this would, I don't think we'd even be talking about this. If no. they hadn't, if they had just kept the oh, ball yeah. rolling the way they He's had. there because of that. Right. I don't yeah. think they, I don't think they would have made this move because I think it's kind of desperate of them. I couldn't but, agree. I couldn't agree more. Work, you know, and you know, so. the, the real desperation is like, I don't remember them announcing Josh Brolin. Now, Josh Brolin is not Robert Downey Jr., but do you remember them announcing Josh Brolin as Thanos? No. No, but I mean, they, I don't know. They probably did. Because he, probably did, but to me, was, but, but he would have been announced at a point way before it reached its peak of like cultural phenomenon. I mean, people were on board, but yeah, like, when did yeah. he first show up? Like the Avengers in, in the after credit scene? In the after no, credit scene, was it? Yeah, right. I'm saying like, like I'll do it myself. So I mean, that was that was four years into the whole MCU. Like they I think, were still kind of just getting started. So. I think it would have hit harder if they had not made the announcement at fucking Comic-Con and well, they had that, done it in an end credit thing. That is the whole argument of like, that I makes it that, feel way cheaper to me, but it's also, but that I totally agree as a fan, but I understand completely. Like you already said, it's going to work. I'll be there. And I'm yeah, like, right. I'll be there too. Would we have been there? If not for that, I don't know. And they know that. So it's like, I thought when I first saw Thor Ragnarok, when he goes and Thor goes into the arena and the green smoke starts popping up that and rule. Hulk comes out, we all knew that was going to happen. It's and I thought hurt. at the time, I was like, if we didn't know that was going to happen, when that happened, that would have been one of the biggest pops ever, ever. Like it's it would have been huge. But, but I get how they were like, okay, but we need people to show up to watch this movie, so we need them to be right. hyped, and to get them hyped, we need to tell them Hulk's going to be in it. For the too. record, like, I wasn't I suggesting... I argument. For so. the record, I wasn't suggesting don't tell anybody Robert Downey Jr. is going to be in the movie he's going to be in. I was saying... Just put in it one in an after-credit scene of another of, Marvel Because you know there's right. going to be one come out before that. Right, That's right, what right. I was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I was saying. Because like now, having, yeah, that, him, yes. having him come on, on stage it at Comic-Con in the yeah, stinky fucking no, room... Yeah, right. like, dude, as many people would have, it would have been the talk of the town, and it would have right. seemed like subterfuge. You're right. It and when been word got out that that happened, people would have went to see whatever that movie was. Yes. More, too, and would have made more money for that movie, and people would have been just as hyped. So, what yeah, I, no, you're right. You're right when, about that. When the multiverse first started happening, what I really hoped, and I hope they fucking, I, list, please listen to me, what they should fucking be doing, if they want to get, just, hey, settle down. Let's kind of start over, right? Instead of working our asses off to build this whole fucking ten year arc, let since we have the multiverse, it means we also have access to any storyline from the comic books fucking ever. We can recast anybody to play who just start making standalone movies that fucking hit. Standalone superhero movies that fucking hit that you don't have to have seen nine hundred fucking mm -hmm. movies and TV shows before. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get new people, because you're not getting new people if you tell them, by the way. Uh, here's 19 DVDs that you're going to need to watch before you come in here. They don't make standalone shit anymore. Make some, just right. make a couple. That's kind of standalone movies. I mean, that's kind of sort of, they did it for a different reason, but like DC, when the DCEU failed the way yeah. it did, they started doing like, you know, Todd Phillips, Joker movies yeah. and Matt Reeves, new Batman movie. Yeah. They start they started just being like, you know what? Just fuck all that. Let's yeah, right. and now they're about to reboot the DCEU with James, with Gunn, James right Gunn show. And I feel like there's a good chance that'll hit, but in the middle they realized they were like, we have these great properties, these great right. characters. Let's not worry about all this bullshit that didn't work. Let's just make movies with them that do hit for people. And, you know, and that shit worked. It, Man, it they landed. They really fumbled Batman for so fucking long. And mm -hmm. it's it's crazy because, you know, Batman's in the public domain in, not, in 2034. Like, in our not long from, in 10 fucking years, me and you can make a Batman movie if we want to. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna. I'm at least gonna do a short. Yeah. You know, but like we can totally make up. And that's crazy because, dude, like I'm I'm actually I know people are like, God damn, is there going to be more Batman movies? But like I'm actually really pumped to be that I'll live in a time when any creative person doesn't right. have to make a deal with D.C. Right. So like if hypothetically Quentin Tarantino wanted to do a fucking 60 style Batman right. movie, he legally could like yeah. that's very exciting to me. Yeah, no, so, I agree. We'll hit. But yeah, I love the, the nerd talk. Yeah. So if y'all still listen, if you're here, I assume you're a dork too. And thanks for listening. We appreciate it. And I guess 
That'll be it for us this week, and we'll see you next time. Here's Lydia Loveless. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Royalty and rednecks are alike. They both like cutting and picking fights. Biscuits and baked beans where they don't belong. Sit on down with Corey and Trey and learn some fancy shit. Today we'll laugh a little even when they're wrong. They'll take you to a magical place where if you call someone a cut, nobody cares. They keep it debonair at putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs.